بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الأخوة والأخوات الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأسعد الله وقتكم بكل خير نلتقي بكم مجددا في اليوم العلمي الرابع لكلية دارة الأعمال للفصل الدراسي خريف 2023 حيث نستعرض معا في هذا اليوم العلمي المشاركة البحثية لطلاب الكلية وهي عبارة عن مجموعة متنوعة من البحوث العلمية التي تناقش قضايا مجتمعية اقتصادية وإدارية ومالية متنوعة تخدم اقتصاد البلاد في الختام نتمنى لكم قضاء وقت طيبة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello everyone, my name is Abdullah. Today I'm going to present my uh, research of contemporary issue, which is the impact of remote work on employee performance during COVID-19. My structure is Dr. Sabri. Uh, these are my content, definition of terms, why it's considered a contemporary issue, the aim of the study, analyze and methodology, summary of previous study, the initial review, the reflection, implication, limitation, recommendation. Finally, conclusion. Firstly, we have definition of remote work. Remote work known as uh, telecommuting or uh, teleworking, which means that uh, employee can work uh, a location outside of their office. Uh, that means uh, they can work in their, ha uh, their home. Employee performance uh, refer the level of productivity, efficiency, which, uh, which means the employee complete their job uh, responsibility. COVID-19, uh, COVID the pandemic is infection or history, disease caught by SARS-CoV-2. Uh, it has appeared in, uh, in China, Wuhan, China, in December uh, 2019. Why is it considered a contemporary issue? Uh, remote work uh, was available in the beginning of uh, 2000, but it, was, uh, it wasn't very important. But uh, when the, the pandemic attacked the world, uh, remote work became very important for all organiza organizations to complete their work. And uh, the issue is the organization cannot, don't know how to, uh, to manage remote employees who work remotely. The aim of the study, the aim of the study to examine the, how remote work affect employee performance. The study seeks to understand benefit and challenge of remote work and to identify the factors that determine the success of remote work. Analysis and methodology. Uh, the data methods I have used in my research is secondary data based on literature review and previous uh, previous study of 15 articles from Google Scholar. And the data I have used in previous study, primary uh, and secondary data, uh, which is uh, such as uh, questionnaire, interview, and uh, articles. These are the previous study. Uh, this, uh, this study has found that uh, uh, remote work has a positive impact on employee performance. Uh, it, it also presents a, ch a challenge uh, such as depends on technology, internet connection issue, and distraction commitment. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, this study has, uh, has found uh, negative impact on employee performance, uh, such as decrease in productivity and uh, diffic uh, difficult monitoring performance. Here, the reflection. Uh, remote work has become uh, popular in the last few, year a few years. Uh, and it, it gives some uh, benefits such as uh, uh, increased flexibility and reduced commitment time. And also on the other, on the other hand, uh, it can, uh, can be beneficially for employee uh, without the destruction of busy office. Employee may be able to focus more on their work and, and they, they can feel uh, comfortable to work in their, ho their home. Uh, also, it gives uh, some challenges, such as uh, which uh, neg negatively impact employee performance, such as the uh, lack of face-to-face, -face, uh, uh, feeling uh, of isolation, reduced motivation, and finally, uh, lack of uh, uh, balance between work and personal responsibility. 
is the implication uh, increased autonomy, which means that uh, employee can feel free to work uh, free and to manage their time. They can work from home and in, in any hour they can uh, work. And uh, distraction and resolution, which means that the employee can find that difficult to balance between uh, work and personal, uh, personal life. Finally, communication challenge. Here we have a limitation. Firstly, limited uh, sample size. Uh, many, stu uh, uh, many studies of the impact of the remote work used a sample, uh, small sample size of questionnaire. And uh, short time frame, uh, short time uh, period, it's, uh, it's like for two months or three months. Uh, technological uh, constraint. Here I have a recommendation, establish a clear expectation. Every employee has to know their, their, uh, their responsibility and their goal to, they can, they, to, to reduce misunderstanding. Uh, training and support. Every organization has to provide training and support for employees who work remotely. Finally, monitor performance. Finally, we have conclusion which the literature review include 15 papers to, that ex examine the impact of remote work uh, on employee performance during COVID-19. The papers are based uh, on collect, uh, data collected in Indonesia, Bangladesh, and uh, the UK and other countries using qu uh, quantitative and qualitative research methods. The study identify several advantages and disadvantages of remote work, such as reduced transportation costs, more time flexibility, better work-life work balance, reduced productivity, miscommunication, and conflict between work and personal life. The, re the research also, also indicate the motivation and engagement mediate that the relation between remote work and employee performance. There are my reference. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Michael Today I will talk about my topic, the impact of ethical leadership on employee performance. Uh, my major is business administration and my instructor is Dr. Sabri Japan. Uh, this is my content. We have uh, introduction and definition terms and what it considers the contemporary issue and the aim of the study and theoretical framework and, uh, and data and methodology and research importance. And uh, we have a summary of a previous study and, uh, so, and the previous study literature review and uh, limitation and reflection and the last one, conclusion. Basically, in the introduction, the ethical leadership is uh, about, uh, is about uh, leadership who have uh, ethical values and ethical, and ethical behavior uh, in their action, such as integrity and fairness, uh, and, fairness uh, and, uh, and uh, ethical, uh, ethical leadership is about uh, how, how, how leaders is, uh, care about uh, the, the, the employee. And employee performance, it's, uh, it's uh, how, how employee care and faithful, uh, faithful uh, their job duties and, uh, and uh, their excuse uh, their tasks. And, uh, and uh, performance also considers uh, our assignment uh, of how available an employee uh, is, uh, to, uh, is to the organization. And what it uh, considers a contemporary issue, uh, like we see the impact of ethical leadership on employee performance. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's important uh, it's important and significant topic in the contemporary issue today. I collected the 18 papers. Uh, I collected a, a 18 papers, and all the papers is agreed uh, agrees with the the, the, the the ethical leadership has impact on the performance. The aim of the study or the goals of uh, or the goals of the study. The aim of the study is uh, on the impact of ethical leadership in the performance. It's uh, it's about understand. It's about understanding the relationship between uh, ethical leadership, uh, its influence, and the uh, employee performance. Uh, now we have a theoretical framework. Uh, theoretical, framework uh, theoretical framework, ethical leadership, uh, strategized by the Morial, uh, Morial and uh, Morial, uh, Morial uh, values, integrity, and fairness. And the data and methodology, the, uh, this study, it's used, uh, used uh, the analytical uh, descriptive uh, approach, and I collected data from a mini source, uh, ResearchGate and, uh, and Google Scholar, and I collected 18 papers from many different countries. 
and about research, important uh, research in the, the ethical leadership on Hungary performance. It's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's uh, can help the organization. It can help the organization fostering a positive work environment that promote the ethical value. And we have a summary of previous study. The most, uh, the most, uh, the most important point in the summary of previous, uh, previous study, it's the ethical leadership fostering might the trust, the trust and fairness and engagement and, uh, and, and, and increase the productivity and improve the job satisfaction. And uh, I choose uh, five samples from the lecture review. Uh, this is uh, the big, uh, this is a uh, paper number one. It's uh, by it's by Kazim in uh, 2022. It's uh, it's a study the, the it's by, uh, it's uh, it's posting in the Nigeria. It's a study the public uh, public sector, and it's finding the the ethical leadership has impact on only performance. And this is paper number two. It's uh, it's by uh, Hamid and all of authors. It's posting in the, uh, 2016 in uh, UAE, and it's uh, study the the public sector and private sector and finding the same thing. The ethical leadership has impact on Umbria performance. And paper number three. It's by Hinesh, uh, by Hinesh uh, to, and all of authors 2022, and it's. Uh, and uh, it's posting in uh, UAE. It's study the both side, uh, both side also, uh, both uh, both uh, study uh, public and private sector. And it's finding the ethical leadership has impact on the performance. And we have uh, 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 this paper, paper number four. It's uh, by Chang uh, and all of authors. Uh, it's posting in China and uh, and uh, it's study the private sector and finding the same thing. And the paper of uh, by Sarah, it's a study, uh, it's uh, it's posting in Indonesia and study the uh, both sector, public and private sector. And we have a limitation, we have a limitation of a study, the impact of ethical leadership on only performance. It's monthly for common method uh, basis. Most studies really, really on self-report uh, measures. And we have uh, two points, uh, reflection, um, incorporate ethical leadership onto leadership development uh, programs and remote uh, sub subjective work uh, work environment and about the conclusion we have the most uh, most important five points the ethical leadership uh, has a positive impact on the performance and ethical leadership promote the job satisfaction increase increase the productivity uh, receive the organization support means of to connection between leadership and uh, protective uh, employee and ethical leadership can be development and promote uh, and, uh, ethical, and ethical leadership on the performance, uh, the importance of the ethical leadership. And this is my reference. Uh, this is my case. Thank you for this. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohammed Zanati. Um, my major is business administration. And my structure is uh, the Prof. Uh, Sabri. Today, I'll be talking about the impact of COVID-19 on uh, supply chain management. And this is my table of contents. I will start with the introduction, movement to the terminologies, methodology, a literature review table, literature review, reflection, and limitations, ending in, uh, with the conclusion. As an introduction, uh, as we also uh, as we all saw in uh, 2020, how uh, COVID-19 affected the whole world and uh, affected the, the supply chain management of all the stocks, and all of the stocks went out of stock because they, didn't, uh, they had to change their uh, supply chain management system. Uh, terminologies, uh, COVID-19 is a disease that uh, were found in China in 2019, at the end of 2019. Uh, supply chain management is uh, the whole process of, uh, of the product, starting from the manufacturing, getting into the customers. As a methodology, I used the secondary data and I collected uh, uh, 15 different papers, and most of the papers were secondary data, and some of them were uh, primary data, which used the questionnaires. And this is my literature review tables, which I used uh, 15 different papers. And this are uh, some of the most important uh, papers that I chose. The first one uh, were uh, study, studied the whole pandemic and how it's uh, generally uh, affected the uh, the world, uh, how COVID-19 uh, affected the supply chain management, and the paper was used uh, questionnaire and, uh, 
and I got it got uh, 130 responses for, from people and uh, and it found that uh, at the beginning COVID-19 has a huge negative impact on uh, on, uh, on the supply chain management. The second paper uh, were, which has been done in uh, Serbia and it st studied how uh, COVID-19 affected the uh, hotel supply chain management. And it uh, has a questionnaire for 40 different hotels and that received that, that uh, COVID-19 has affected the, their supply chain and they had to find new ways to get their food and their stuff. Third paper that uh, that uh, had been done in India that about food uh, supply chain and it found that that, that affect uh, the food uh, market and how it affected it and they had to find a new ways to to get uh, the, because most of the stores at the beginning they went out of stock. The fourth paper that has been done in Turkey which talk about uh, generally how the pandemic affected uh, affected the the, the supply chain. And the last one is about, about the health care management and how the pandemic affected it and how most of the hospital had uh, faced a problem with their supply. And the reflection that uh, most of the papers found that uh, COVID-19 at the beginning has a huge negative impact on the supply chain management, but then the companies has to find the new ways to deal with the, with the pandemics. Limitations, my uh, study faced that the first one is most of the paper used uh, secondary data, which will cause a problem with the other researchers because most of the research will, will, be the, will have the same results because they are based on uh, previous studies. And the second uh, one is that most of the papers were based in India and Asia. As a conclusion, uh, as we all saw in uh, 2020, most of the most of the world were uh, affected by COVID-19, and uh, it has a huge impact on the supply chain network. But uh, most of the companies found the ways to deal with the pandemics and to uh, change their uh, supply chain systems. And this is my table of references. Thank you for it. So our main topic for today is going to be religious marketing and. Uh, uh, this topic was chosen due to the relativity of this topic globally, uh, touching every religion around the globe. And uh, the main effect of it, that uh, the main side that we're going to discuss today is the uses of religions in marketing. <coughs> uh, mainly, there is uh, two, two ways. Either the marketing uh, is used, marketing skills and... and, and uh, and company use the religious to market a specific product or services, or, <coughs> sorry, or religious marketing in, in, in other different ways, like from uh, the political side of view, we, we see that some religious uh, political parties, they will use religion to promote their, their political views and political parties. So first of all, we need to understand what's religious marketing is the use of religion uh, to promote a specific product or services or point of views, or the other way is, is marketing using religion. So as I say, why is a contemporary issue? Because it's related to the whole global. We have too many religions in this world. Each religion has been used in marketing or marketing using this religion to promote their point of view. If you have, if it's in, as an example, you have the, in, in Islamic banking, it's used to promote the Islamic point of view of banking. Uh, so as I said, why is a contemporary issue? Because it's a general topic that has been used all around the globe. All religions use uh, religion in marketing. You have Christianity, they promote it uh, in their political parties as well, same as political parties in Islam. You have banking using it to promote Islamic product or Islamic finance. So that's why it's considered a contemporary issue because it's on the global scale in any religion or any country that can relate to the topic. As I said, some of the examples are political 
parties use, use, use religion to promote their point of views. You have uh, the, the company use Ramadan or Christmas as a, as a special time to promote their product and they use it. So the research cause is to focus on the ethical side of view of religious marketing. Uh, a lot of companies, they use religion in the marketing and we just need to focus on what this research is focusing on, it's, it's ethical or not. They're using it on the right way or the wrong way. Uh, similar to the Islamic finance, as I said, there's a lot of issues right now. There's a lot of debate that is not Islamic enough and it cannot be vice versa. زي ما شفنا مثلا في المؤتمر الوطني في بدايته في الألفين. Ah, it's all English. Okay. تمام. So as we see in the, in the beginning of 2012, House of Representatives in Libya, they decided to cancel all the, the percentage on al-fawaid. I forgot how to say it in English. So interest on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, uh, on, the, on the banking system in Libya, and that was because of an Islamic point of view. And that's because in some Islamic party used uh, religious marketing to, to, to influence the people to push to push for that, that, even though that had a negative side effect on the Libya banking system that only started to recover in 2017. So in conclusion, religion is a very powerful tool that can be used both negatively and effectively. Uh, a lot of company use it, a lot of government use it, and it all depends on what you need and how you use it from it. But the main point of view is the ethical side. Is it right, is it wrong? Unfortunately, for some, for some companies or some countries, religion is a red line, you cannot discuss it. So if the company is using the religion on the wrong side, just because it's using religion, you cannot put it for check because people say, well, it's religious, religion is above everything, and you cannot do that. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mohammed Ghanem, majoring in finance and banking. My topic is the impact of work and capital management on profitability of UK retail firms, supervised by Dr. Sabri. This is the table of content. We start with the definition of the UK. Why is it considered a contemporary issue? The aim of the study. Then we'll go to the, uh, to the analysis of the methodology, some of the previous studies, literature review, reflection, implication, limitation, conclusion. First of all, retail plays an important lead in the UK industry in the UK economy. It employed over 3.4 uh, million of employees and it generates billions of rich pound COVID, uh, in, in 2019. COVID-19 pandemic has a negative impact on the, uh, on the UK industry. Why is it considered a contemporary issue? First of all, it shifted the it shifted the way that the, uh, the managers look on the working capital and how it does, does it affect profitability. First of all, economic circumstances due to the lockdown, to do, due to the physical uh, retails, physical retail shops being closed. And second of all, the cash flow and liquidity challenge. It shows how the, uh, how the company focus on the cash flow and liquidity and how does it manage those things shift the consumer behavior. The consumer behavior shifted from going directly to the shop to the online shop. Now it's changed the way that the consumer spend their money online rather than going to the shop. And then government support and policy in COVID-19, the government supported by reducing the tax and helping them with the, with the financial aid. There was a long-term long -term, uh, implication the consumers started buying online rather than going to the shops. The aim of the study, it focuses on how the manager can manage their working capital to, effect, uh, to see how does it affect on the profitability. How does it increase the profitability? How does it increase the cash flow? And sees how the financial stability of the company. Analysis and methodology, the study is 
we had uh, this study focused on secondary data based on the previous studies. All of the previous studies was examined the secondary data and the retail sector. Some of the previous studies were collected. I've been I collected 60 research paper that that have working capital uh, profit the effect of working capital on profitability and how it generate there were minimum minimum papers six uh, minimum uh, firms six firms maximum 66 firms these are previous studies this focuses on 29 electric retail firms of the uk and had a, a negative impact on profitability the studies selected 10 firms of department store chains listed in London Stock Exchange and had a positive impact on profitability. This firm has collected 32 uh, retail firms in the COVID-19 pandemic and shows that there was a positive impact on the profitability by collecting the uh, by studying with the regression model and fixed effect model. This company focuses uh, on the houseware uh, retail companies and had collected 20 firms and there was a positive impact. This study had a negative impact on the profitability of the 24 UK retail companies that were collected. This company has a, uh, this study collected 66 firms, reflection, and previous studies shows that there was uh, the good working management had a positive impact on profitability, bad working management has a negative impact on profitability. Implication, it shows that how do they manage their account receivable, how do they manage their uh, account payable, how to manage their inventory turnover days, to reduce their to increase their profitability and the and the supply chain problems that they faced that the, that the study faced limitation lack of uh, lack of uh, lack of uh, papers in the re in the same region uh, lack of papers in the same industry they should uh, recommendation my recommendation is they should for, uh, collect more papers of the same region or collect another regions this is my conclusion, references. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Abdurrahman, and my major is business administration. Uh, prepared my, uh, my topic is the impact of just in time and organization performance. Uh, the instruction, Dr. Sabri. This is my table of content, introduction, terminologies, and we have that and methodologies, literature review and conclusion and reflection, limitations and recommendation and references. For the introduction, uh, just in time is a Japanese practice used to help businesses to improve efficiency and uh, reduce waste and uh, also uh, respond quickly to the changes in the demand and also reduce costs. Uh, then we have why just in time is a contemporary uh, just in time is a contemporary issue because it's provide businesses with uh, provide businesses with the. Uh, provide businesses uh, with a way to, fa uh, to face today's challenges like uh, cost of, of production and competitive environment. Uh, for the definitions or uh, terminologies, just in time is, a, is a, basically it's when we, when we uh, order the, the raw materials when it's needed only. That's mean we don't use storage. Then we have firms' performance as an eco economic measure that shows firms' capacity to human and materials resources to meet the firms' goals. Uh, I'm using in data, in data and methodology, I'm using uh, secondary data in my research, uh, qualitative, uh, qualitative methods. Uh, in the literature review, I, I bought two papers, uh, both of them uh, published in 2017 uh, and, and the other one published in 2013. Both of them used secondary data. The find, uh, findings shows that uh, both, of, uh, both of them shows that uh, just-in-time has a positive impact on organization performance. 
For my reflection and conclusion, uh, 15 papers have been reviewed. Some of them use secondary data and some of them use primary data. Uh, both of them qualitative and uh, uh, quantitative and qualitative. Uh, my research shows that uh, just in time has a positive impact on organization performance on financial side and operational side uh, by uh, increasing uh, turnover and uh, reducing waste, reducing costs. Uh, Reducing content of labor also. Uh, a paper from 15, that paper I collected, uh, shows that uh, just in time has no impact on organization performance. For my li limitations, first limit I faced uh, that limit number for, uh, limit number of paper related to my topic directly. The second limit, which is uh, <clears throat> using secondary data, not using uh, primary data, which is a gap for uh, future research to improve their, uh, their research in the future. This is my references. Thank you for attention. Hello, everyone. So <coughs> I will present my topic, which is the, the effect of COVID-19 on peer-to-peer -peer lending. Uh, my structure of so Dr. Sabri Kalari and uh, <coughs> And uh, my major is uh, finance and banking. So table of contents, we have introduction, terminologies, and the keywords, methodologies, history of peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, lecture review, the link between finding and peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, <coughs> when back to the COVID-19 pandemic and peer-to-peer -peer lending, reflection, application, and uh, recommendation, limitation, conclusion, and uh, references, last one. So an introduction. <coughs> so <coughs> the peer-to-peer -peer lending is uh, it's it's contracts between two parties, which one is the lender and uh, uh, the other one is the uh, borrower, which is uh, meet each other and make the contract online by website. So this for peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, but in the pandemic during the pandemic, the peer-to-peer -peer lending uh, has. Uh, has faced many challenge uh, for uh, for appearance to the people. So, <coughs> so terminologies we have a fintech. So the fintech is a financial technology, which is financial service that, that delivered to the customers by technologies. So use the technology to uh, to deliver the the financial service for for customers. And peer to peer lending, that like we say. And the and the uh, and the introduction. My keywords: peer to peer lending, financial institution, financial loans, the effect of COVID nineteen. So methodology, uh, I use the scientific resource from Google Scholar, ResearchGate, and Diag Science to uh, to collect for ten papers to my lecture review and my results. So history of peer to peer lending. Peer to peer lending, it's. Uh, <coughs> Beginning in the United Kingdom in 2005, uh, uh, which uh, the peer-to-peer -peer lending appears to the people from the global crisis like uh, 2008 and the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, is uh, growing in, in these cases because people don't don't trust by by the bank. So uh, in the crisis in two, uh, 2008, don't trust to the bank, so they're going to another type to financial service like peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, and uh, the, those in uh, the company, which is uh, called Zuba, and uh, find the cricket. This is in the US. <coughs> so there are uh, lecture review. So uh, <coughs> we have uh, in the peer-to-peer -peer lending, I see the same definition in, the, in my lecture, which is support my, uh, my definitions. And the link between uh, find and peer-to-peer -peer lending, so, and, uh, we, found, we found in the financial technologies is, uh, is, is a big part of the peer-to-peer -peer lending. So peer-to-peer -peer lending is dependent on the, uh, <coughs> on the technology, which Lee and Chai uh, see the technology is going to, to uh, upload the peer-to-peer -peer lending and there be a more efficiency to the service. The impact of COVID-19 pandemic and peer-to-peer -peer lending, this is most part of, the, of this presentation. So according by Fibella in Indonesia in 2020, so we have a sample of uh, 250 which collect 
uh, responding for uh, 117, which show the 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 <coughs> the, the, the increasing increase of the of demand of the of the peer to peer lending. So my reflection, peer to peer lending is have uh, uh, of the COVID nineteen how impact the peer to peer lending. In this, in my in, uh, in my results, I see that the COVID uh, COVID nineteen impact in positive way. So this is my recommendation for this uh, presentation. Uh, application we uh, have increased loan defaults. We have uh, reduced investor increasing regulation. So, and my limitation, I uh, my limitation is, I I have about ten paper that from Indonesia, the information it's it's not uh, <coughs> from the different regions, different countries that. Uh, <coughs> so, I I I try to collect in twenty papers, but all my coll uh, collected from the paper it's fourteen only. Uh, in conclusion, in summary, uh, the, the COVID-19 and peer to peer lending, uh, <coughs> COVID-19 impact in the peer to peer lending in a positive way. Because, because I see in my results that the crisis of the global, global crisis that, uh, that happened in the world, it's, it's hard to COVID-19 to appear to, to people. So in the COVID-19, I see in the 2019, it's increased in the demand of the uh, demand of the loans, demand of the users. So users is increasing by by 30 percent, in my my presentation. This is my references. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Mariam Rifai, and uh, my major is project management, uh, and my topic uh, the benefits of implementation. Implementation and Quality Management System ISO 9001. My supervisor, uh, Dr. Sabri. My table of content uh, at the beginning, what is ISO? What is ISO 9001? Introduction, aim of the study, analysis and methodology, summary of previous studies, uh, previous studies, literature review, reflection, the implication, limitations, and con conclusion. So at the beginning, what is ISO? ISO is International Organization for Standardization. Uh, is the Federation of National uh, National Standards Bodies. It is non-governmental organization that uh, establish uh, many systems. One of them is ISO 9001. Uh, one. What is 9001? It is uh, international standards that gives uh, requirements for uh, organizations, a quality management system. Okay, a quality management system is uh, emerged has uh, has emerged as a vital component for uh, uh, for enhancing competition, uh, leadership, and uh, in overall uh, organization performance. My aim of this uh, of my study was to investigate and implement uh, and determine the benefit of ISO 9001 quality management system. Uh, analysis and uh, methods. I used the qualitative uh, method. All my data is secondary data, which is collected from papers and uh, articles, scient scientific articles. Summary of a previous study, 16 papers uh, are reviewed in my literature review. I choose, there are, I choose uh, some pointing, uh, pointing authors from 16 papers. First of all, I have Santos and Milan uh, 2013, uh, by using uh, questionnaire, uh, he, uh, they stated, stated that the benefit of uh, ISO, uh, the benefit of ISO, uh, like uh, improve the, uh, the company image and uh, cust improve the customer satisfaction and uh, reduction the costs. Okay, uh, Berwanti in 2022 conducted uh, a paper, uh, paper research among Indonesian food industry. Uh, they are uh, use questionnaire and they stated uh, is in overall the quality management system uh, ISO 9001. It uh, has a positive signi significant impact on uh, on product quality. Uh, third one, DIGMIC 2022, a study exploring uh, the moderating rule of uh, national culture. Uh, he used uh, questionnaire and he stated that uh, 
there are a benefit for of implementing ISO 9001. It has a positive um, influence on organizational innovations. Uh, and the last one, Abbasi and Najrash, in 2022, uh, used a questionnaire, and they stated uh, that there are many benefits for ISO 9001 implementation. Uh, it's uh, improved uh, the customer satisfaction, uh, reduced costs, uh, and improve employment uh, motivation and in on innovation. My reflection, uh, most of authors uh, write down the benefits of uh, implementation uh, uh, ISO 9001. The majority of, uh, of research uh, used uh, questionnaire, which is primary data, and the research publication that were examined span in a uh, period of 18 recent years in 2000, uh, 2004 and 2022. Practical implications, a quality management system that is following ISO 9001 uh, standards might be adopted by uh, companies that don't uh, have the certification. Uh, my limitation, uh, the first limitation is my, uh, all, all my data is secondary data, and uh, I have a limit uh, uh, time and uh, papers. Uh, in conclusion, uh, ISO uh, 9001 have uh, many uh, benefits and uh, the, the, the business that not adopt this uh, system, they should because of its efficiency and effectiveness. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Isra Houidi. I'm today I'm going to present how does ISO affect project management. Uh, I'm a project man management student uh, my instructor is uh, Professor Sabri Kirghli. Here are my table of content. First of all, I have an introduction under the definition of terms, why is considered contemporary issues, the aim of study, theoretical framework, ISO certification in Libya, summary previous studies, uh, previous studies, literature review, reflection, implication, limitations, recommendation, and conclusion. As an introduction, definition of terms. First, we have in a project management. Project management is in a uh, process, methods, skills, and uh, experience uh, achieve the project management objective according to the expectation that we put uh, on the project. Uh, definition of ISO uh, stand, uh, stands ISO, ISO is a standards international organization, uh, a non governmental organization. Mm -hmm and uh, develops published standards uh, for various industries. ISO standards are designed to ensure quality safe, uh, safety and uh, efficiency, and ISO doesn't only have uh, the project management, also uh, man uh, managing manufacturing, healthcare, and more. Why my topic is considered as any uh, contemporary issues? We all know that uh, ISO is in a globe or an organization, uh, international organization. Mm -hmm. That's why it's uh, contemporary issues. The aim of my study, uh, the, imp the impact of uh, ISO standard project, uh, standard project management practices on uh, outcomes. The study will, ex uh, will examine the various standards uh, that relevant on project management, such as ISO uh, 21500 and ISO uh, 9001 theoretical framework uh, ISO certification in Libya actually in Libya we're relevant uh, ISO provide uh, to customers and we have importance of uh, ISO certification in Libya in current competitive uh, business work we have to have the ISO uh, in our country to develop the markets in Libya. The advantages of uh, ISO certification, uh, the ISO is the best solution for the companies for, for, for gaining more profit, or, and is the most global organization getting more business making high profits uh, are ISO certification companies. One of the advantages is uh, reducing risk uh, analysis and methodology. I have uh, my previous uh, studies, I have based data collection methods 
including uh, qual qualitative interviews and quantitative uh, questionnaires, but, uh, but also I have primary and secondary data in my, uh, in my, in my studies, summary of previous study. The previous study is aims in uh, ISO stand standards on uh, project management practices and outcomes. The study will contribute also uh, exam examining literature review topic, provide insight to into the benefit and challenging of uh, adopting ISO. <coughs> literature review, this is my first, uh, my, my first literature review. I study effects ISO standards and critical framework project management. Uh, it's co construction uh, industry. The research make the importance of uh, ISO and on project management. Uh, how and how does this effectiveness? Second, the study aims the project management benchmark SMEs implemented. The SMEs uh, develop more than one industry in the. In the, in the project management. The, here the, the paper describes uh, project management improvement program according ISO IES. This is in a technology uh, industry. And this is uh, the ISO, this is a uh, relevant two way instruction that shows that. Uh, ISO and project management, they are merged together with the quality management system and the uh, quality management system and the best object can be also uh, uh, expressed by uh, ad adhering to the ISO certification requirement. Reflection, I have reviewed 14 papers of how ISO uh, affect uh, project management. All those standards are uh, lines key. Implications. The implication also uh, ISO have scientific impact of project management practices. Organization adopt ISOs. Limitation. I have uh, one advantage that I don't have. I don't find enough papers, and all the papers talk about ISOs. And in my conclusion, uh, based on the purpose study, it can be uh, conducted ISO standards certification impact project management and uh, many companies have to uh, train their uh, employee for ISO standards because it's, it's most common uh, and the most common company organization now. There are my references. And thank you. Hey, hello everyone, I'm Anwar uh, I'm a seventh semester student. Um, and my major is banking and finance, and my topic today is the impact of the financial technologies in banking performance. Uh, my table of content, we have terminologies, data and methodologies, introduction, why it's considered as a contemporary issue, evolution of the financial technologies, lecture review, reflection, recommendations, uh, limitations, conclusion, then references. Terminologies, uh, fintech is, uh, is the combinations of the term uh, financial and technologies, and it refers to the businesses that uses uh, technology in their uh, processes and their services. Uh, data and methodologies, uh, the qualitative method were used in this uh, paper uh, with the secondary data by relying on 18 references. Uh, introduction, uh, the FSB, which stands for the Financial Stability Bank, defines the Financial technologies as the tools and techniques uh, which are uh, to be processed uh, and regulate the, fin the financial and banking uh, accounting, uh, administrative opportunities, uh, operations, sorry, uh, matters to help to achieve uh, access to the use of individuals uh, and businesses. Uh, to, fi to financial banking services uh, quickly and at l the lowest cost and at the highest uh, quality. Why it's considered as a contemporary issue? Uh, financial, technology, financial technology has become uh, more important uh, in the latest years. Uh, so it, uh, due to the, 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 uh, the uses of the smartphones and the 
the, the internet. So it made it easier to access the, the online, service, uh, online services. Uh, then we have the evolution of the financial technology. Is, it is, uh, it's divided into three categories or three periods. FinTech one from 1868 uh, till 1967. And the major uh, revolutionary thing happened in this period when the, when the USA laid a cable through the, the Atlantic Ocean till Europe to transact the financial uh, informations. Uh, then we have the Fentech II in 1967 until 2008, uh, and it started when the first ATM machine were invented in 1967. Uh, then it's continued until 2008, until the financial uh, global uh, crisis in 2008. Uh, Fintech 3 since uh, uh, 2008 until nowadays, and uh, after the loss of confidence in the banks following, uh, the, the financial technologies has the biggest opportunities to enter the uh, financial markets and the banks uh, to, to make it more confidence for the investors to, to come back. Uh, let's just review uh, all of 18 research, uh, research papers uh, conc uh, conclude that the, that that, the positive, that it has a positive impact of the financial uh, technologies on banks. Uh, and in the next slide, there is a pioneer the, uh, the, theorist in the field of the banking and finance. We have the Basel, uh, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision uh, consultative document issued in 2018. Uh, the document collects development in banks and bank supervision in uh, provision research, current media analysis, and technology uh, products. Um, then a study conducted by Katrina De Santos uh, in 2020, in, in 2022, uh, the impact of the financial technology on banks, on the European commercial banks, uh, and the, the main things that happened in this, uh, the main things talked about this uh, paper is the consumer theory and the theory of information and the innovation diffusion. Uh, then we have the finding of Ahmed Al-Julani and uh, Munir Al-Hakim in 2008, uh, financial technology in banking industry, challenges and opportunities. Uh, and it talks about the, and it talks about the, fi the financial technology and banking in industry in the opportunities and threats. Uh, the reflection, uh, after investigating the all of 18 papers, uh, I found that the fintech has a great impact in the, in the financial technology. Uh, recommendations, uh, since the effectiveness of financial technologies has been proven, banks should incorporate uh, financial technologies into their systems to maintain the highest level of quality. Uh, limitations, I couldn't find uh, all 20 papers and most of the existing uh, studies were investigating the financial technologies in uh, general, not the impact in specific. Uh, in conclusion, the main objective of uh, this paper is to shine uh, light on the high, high technology and financial industry development wave, and it also attempt to the uh, uh, challenges and opportunities. These are my references, and thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Swaib uh, Rufelli, uh, uh, major in finance and banking, uh, instructor, uh, Professor Sabri. Today, I'm going to talk about the impact of information technology on financial institution performance. This is my table of contact. First of all, introduction, definition, uh, definitions of terms, why it's considered a contemporary issue, the aim of the study, uh, and, and analyze the uh, analyze, uh, analysis and methodology, summary of uh, previous study, uh, previous study, additional review, reflection, implication, limitation, recommendation, and finally conclusion. Uh, an introduction, information technology have changed the way uh, we deal with financial institutions. That's why we need to uh, study it, and that's why it's a contemporary issue. Uh, uh, it's made so many uh, features and services. Uh, in definition, first of all, financial institution has a crucial role in the economy, uh, such as investors. Information technology on financial institution, information technology have transformed uh, oper operations and financial uh, to make them more efficient and client focused. Uh, 
uh, IT open a door for our services like uh, online banking, mobile payments, automated uh, trading, while enhanced risk management and uh, reg uh, regulator uh, compliance. Uh, definition of terms, uh, FinTech, FinTech is information technology uh, and financial services. What does it mean, FinTech, uh, f uh, finance and uh, technology, uh, finance and information, uh, finance and technolo uh, technology uh, together called FinTech, uh, blockchain, blockchain ensure a secure and transparent uh, transaction. Uh, FinTech, uh, <coughs> FinTech made so many uh, uh, surfaces and speed up transaction. Uh, why it's considered a contemporary issue? Because information technology and financial uh, innovation and uh, consumer expectations, cyber security threats, uh, and regu uh, regu <coughs> regulatory uh, consideration. Uh, the aim of study explored how information technology affects financial, uh, uh, financial institution performance. We will investigate the areas like uh, operation efficiency and uh, customer experience, risk management, and innovation. Uh, theoretical framework. First of all, uh, methodology. Uh, I used uh, qualitative and quantitative method. I collected 15 uh, papers. All of them, uh, all of them uh, were, uh, all of them were uh, from. Uh, Google uh, Scholar and Re Research Gate, uh, and I utilize uh, secondary data. Some, uh, summary of previous study that explored various topics like user adoption, online banking, fintech investment, fintech services. The finding highlight the importance of trust and user uh, perception, ongoing research in finance technology. Uh, first of all, uh, previous study literature review, the first uh, paper. Uh, made by Trust and Beck. The study fo uh, focused on financial innovation specific in Asia. It discussed uh, cro cro crowdfunding and mobile uh, payment addressing uh, threats post uh, non-banking entering uh, entering financial market. Second paper, this paper provides overview information technology in banks industry in India. It discussed advantage and disadvantage in advanced online banking, uh, customer experience, portfolio, uh, profitability, customer experience, and profitability, uh, but also disadvantage uh, in uh, employment challenges. The third paper, uh, Mark, uh, the third paper made by Mark, this paper explored fintech and machine learning, specific in Georgia. It had defined blockchain and IoT. IoT mean Internet uh, of Things. Uh, the fourth paper uh, by Ryan made by Ryan, the focus of this paper is to analyze the challenges and opportunities in Indonesia made by FinTech. It discussed various FinTech services and offers a foundation in FinTech research. Uh, the fifth paper uh, made by Giorgio, uh, this uh, made by Giorgio specific in uh, Italy. This paper explored how FinTech affects traditional banks and how information technology advancement made a new business model. Uh, and provide a new service uh, in banks. Reflection, the papers highlight financial innovation, impact bank, uh, banks, banks uh, fintech investment, digital finance, consumer uh, acceptance of mobile technology, limitation weak IT infrastructure, limited digital channels, review uh, fintech adoption, indicate customer experience, implications, improve IT infrastructure, uh, expand digital channels, Promote fintech adoption, enhance customer experience, recommendation, promote innovation uh, and tech adoption, use digital finance and ICT, support fintech adoption, simplify uh, regulatory framework, uh, encor uh, encourage collaboration among financial institutions. In conclusion, it is important to acknowledge that financial innovation and technology can have both positive and negative impact in Libya. While this advancement can drive economic growth and enhance access to financial services, there are also risks and challenges that need to be addressed. It is uh, crucial uh, to carefully manage and regulate this technology to mitigate uh, potential and negative consequences such as cybersecurity threats, data privacy con uh, concerns, and uh, exclusion 
of uh, vulnerable population, uh, striking a balance between innovation and risk mitigation is essential uh, for enhancing uh, the benefits of financial innovation while minimizing the negative impact in Libya. These are my analysis and thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Saad bin Saud. Today, I will be talking about cloud enterprise resource planning adoption uh, by the, the model of contemporary issues with the instructor, Professor Dr. Sabri al uh, Kirghli. Uh, my major uh, is project management. <clears throat> this is my table of content. Today, I will be introducing the topic. I will be talking about the historical development of cloud ERP systems, materials and methods, literacy review, reflection, study limitations, and future research, conclusion and implication and references. The introduction. Uh, enterprise resource planning uh, systems are software systems that are used in organizations to mainly integrate all information uh, conducted by different sectors and different departments within the organization. Uh, they are, as I said, they are used in all departments and all uh, important, sec important sectors in the organizations. They can be used as a database for uh, all information and new resources in, within the organization. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the invention of cloud, uh, uh, cloud internet uh, have affected, uh, has a positive effect on the, uh, the ERP systems, which are now are all hosted in cloud platforms. The historical development of cloud ERP, uh, it, it, is, uh, has, it has, has been through a, a historical development from the year of uh, 1960s. Uh, the first name of the system was the Material Requirement Planning, MRP. Then uh, in 1990s, uh, the first ERP system was uh, established as a software system. In 2000s, uh, cloud computing is, was emerged. And, but in the recent years, the adoption of cloud ERP has been increasing in a very high rate. Uh, according to a report uh, by Gunter, uh, there is a 23% growth within this, uh, uh, within this system in the cloud platform. <clears throat> Materials and methods. Uh, I have I've used, I've uh, reviewed more than 17 uh, to, uh, papers uh, from uh, Google Scholar and ResearchGate. You, uh, this, the, the study was uh, used qualitative uh, data and uh, secondary data uh, by using uh, cloud ERP and enterprise resource planning as keywords for my research. Let's let's review. Uh, the following uh, review were, was uh, on the main, main, the main five topics that were concentrated on in the, my literature review were the enterprise resource planning as a system itself, the cloud uh, platform, uh, the cloud-based system, the critical success factors, and the adoption of the system in SMEs, and the implementation of these systems in developing countries. For the first point, uh, enterprise resource planning, all, almost all of the authors, uh, including Alaya and uh, Mohammed Sh Sharari in U UAA, uh, have agreed on that the traditional ERP nowadays is not acceptable and it, it could be uh, very uh, cost costly for, uh, for organizations compared to the uh, cloud-based uh, cloud platform. Uh, the cloud uh, enterprise resource planning, uh, most of the authors in different countries have agreed on the, benef the beneficial uh, uh, features that this system can apply to the all to all organizations and especially uh, small and medium sized uh, organizations. <clears throat> uh, the critical success factors of the uh, of the of these systems uh, included uh, many many of many of them including cost efficiency, uh, remote control, uh, also uh, reliability and flexibility. The adoption of these uh, of, of, of ERP systems in uh, SMEs, uh, 
uh, according to a study in Malaysia, by basically the uh, 98 of all uh, of, of Malaysia are SMEs. And the, the study conducted was, uh, appears that it is more efficient for, uh, for, for SMEs to, uh, con to, 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 to adopt this, this system uh, uh, comparing to the traditional one. <coughs> Implementation in developing countries. The Irish government has uh, one of one of the uh, the workers in, and the Irish government has uh, has done a research and talked about the uh, the, the 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 importance of uh, the, the the transformation from the traditional ERP to the uh, cloud one. On the other hand, in e in Egypt, it was found that the culture in Egypt, uh, the the people are still not fully aware of this uh, system. And this, uh, is, uh, this, this is basically during to the culture uh, differences. The reflection in solidarity, basically in solidarity with all of the, with all the, with all of the authors. Uh, Cloud DRP is a more, is a, is a very efficient uh, way for the operations of, the, of all organizations. On the nation's level, on the nation's level, uh, there wasn't many uh, papers were conducted in the Middle East of, uh, in the Middle East and the developing countries, which that uh, with that uh, reflect that there is a lack of uh, knowledge in these area and in, in these in these areas of countries. <clears throat> also, the development system will, will provide more flexibility of, for owners and capital and capital and managers in terms of remote control, and that can be. Uh, uh, very obvious during the pandemics such as COVID-19. Study limitation. Uh, my, uh, my, my, my research was done on quality, quality, qualitative data only. And also, uh, it, it can, we cannot be generalizing all, uh, on all countries. In conclusion, <coughs> okay. Thank you. These are my references and thank you. Hello everyone, I am Hawan Hamali. My major is business administration and my instructor, Prof. Sabri Kirli. Today I wanted to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on management of small companies. Here my table of content. First, we have introduction. I provide definition of terms and why I consider this topic as a trendy topic and the aim of the study. Second thing is the theoretical framework. We have methodology, a literature review, a reflection, implication, a limitation, recommendation, and lastly, conclusion. First, uh, introduction. Start with definition of terms. The first one is COVID-19. COVID-19 first found in the China in, the, in 2019. Uh, COVID-19 caused a, a negative impact in the small companies. Also, if there are uh, no personal uh, pro protective equipment, it may harm the employees in the companies uh, and their workers. And the second definition is the small companies. The small companies' practices is considered with innovation, the product, and the quickly responsible to their uh, customer or consumer. Also, the, the small companies uh, had a lack of training or education than the larger companies, or lower revenue, or small in their team uh, of employees. So, uh, why it's considered as a trendy topic? Because in COVID-19 uh, caused a crisis in the in the management of the small companies and uh, the, their behaviors or their strategies. So many businesses saw decrease in their economic activity uh, and decline their uh, post sizes, sales, will, will, will revenue. Uh, the, uh, so I specific, I chose the small companies, not the large companies, because in the, the small companies uh, had a lack to, uh, to business plan and uh, a less liquidity to face this crisis. Uh, also, uh, didn't have a, a crisis management uh, technique. Uh, 
the aim of this study to ident identify how the COVID-19 impact the management of small companies and what's the plans and the strategy they put in place to face this uh, crisis. Uh, so regarding to Libya, uh, COVID-19 impacted the small companies in Libya by several ways. First one, uh, economic uh, impact. Uh, small businesses in Libya had a decrease in their uh, uh, consumer demand and supply. And the second one, uh, digital transformation. Uh, small companies tend to use the, the online platforms or e-commerce solution to, to operate uh, remotely. And the uh, last one, uh, supply chain disruption, because in uh, small uh, businesses, uh, dif uh, difficult to access to their uh, materials and protectors uh, to operate. So uh, this leading to uh, production uh, delays and uh, increases the cost. A critical framework, uh, uh, first in methodology, uh, my article is based in the pre previous studies. So I, I, I use most of the secondary data that obtained by the qualitative and quantitative methods. Uh, literary review, I provide some of the significant literary by the pioneering authors. First one, uh, by Ingado in the 2022. Uh, in this paper, use the secondary uh, data that uh, collected by the qualitative and quali quantitative methods. Uh, the target population in this pa paper is Ethiopia. Uh, the results of this paper, uh, uh, we found in the COVID-19 impacted the, the, the small companies' uh, uh, surface with the decrease uh, their revenue or lost the jobs to their employees. Also, uh, to support these businesses, a uh, business owner need to uh, control the uh, expectation and uh, uh, try to continue their marketing and find new ways to provide uh, their product. The second paper is by uh, Farrelly in the 2020. Uh, uh, this study examines uh, how the COVID-19 impact, uh, impacts uh, uh, business owners. So, uh, we find in, uh, after the, the social distancing, uh, a, number of, uh, a number of business owners is uh, down. And third paper, uh, in the India, we find COVID-19 impact uh, the India and all sectors. Uh, fourth paper. Uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, my limitation in uh, my study, okay, when we attempt the crisis management uh, technique, we should be aware uh, because not the small companies have uh, the same resource and the same uh, size or, or, or history. As a conclusion, uh, we, we found in a COVID-19 Impacted the small uh, impacted the small companies negatively. Also, uh, small companies should uh, should but uh, should cut the the needless uh, spending uh, to continue their work. And uh, most of this uh, the small companies will disappear. This is my references, and thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Abdullah Zawi. Today, I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence and the future of banking. Uh, my major is. Uh, Finance and banking. This is my table of contact. Uh, introduction, materials and methods, uh, literature review, summarize, reflection, implications and limitations. First is uh, what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is a wide range of, uh, computer, of uh, computer science. It's actually measured to, uh, to perform uh, tasks for uh, uh, bank sectors, any. Artificial intelligence was first found in the 1950s. It was, uh, yes, it was to mimic human, uh, to mimic human intelligence, but now it's upgraded to a uh, high level, you know, the next level. Why? Uh, it, can, it can handle any most of the tasks. Materials and methods. Uh, the methods used in this uh, topic was uh, mostly quantitative uh, methods uh, based on previous studies. Uh, and necessary review, of course. Uh, it, it was a summary of uh, 15 articles from a Google Scholar. 
uh, yes. What is the concept of artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is mainly used as uh, in, ma in multi corporate uh, companies. Why? To improve the strategies and process and customer satisf satisfaction. And how to do this? Artificial intelligence analyzes the amount of a vast amount of data to uh, present it to the head manager. And how to do that? And the head manager actually takes his decision based on the data collected. So, uh, as Dion Newman said, it's not actually about the quantity of the data, it's about the quality of the data. So, as much as if, if your quality of the data is great, you can have a great, uh, you can, a head manager can make a great decision off of it. Uh, literature review summarized, yes. Uh, regarding to this literature, uh, AI and machine learning is actually uh, a great way to detect. Uh, uh, fraud detection, uh, money laundering, and uh, cyber security. And other study shows how uh, humans have to uh, increase the way of thinking and cognitively critical thinking to be accepted or to have a place in their jobs, any, because artificial intelligence now is highly increasing and it's any, it's a competitive with humans. And if he, there's few humans that doesn't have the enough intelligence to actually uh, qualify in few jobs. And then we have a study by Cashman in uh, 2010 about credit scoring and how credit scoring is actually important. There's a good side and there's a bad, uh, how to measure a, a good credit score and how to measure a bad credit score. Reflection, uh, AI has the potential to Revitalize banking by enabling personalized, personalized customer experience, uh, smart lending, and investment decisions. Implications: AI can can improve uh, customer experience, as it mentioned, by providing uh, personalized and responsive uh, services. Yes. Limitations: there are a few limitations, which is data quality, cybersecurity, uh, uh, ethical consideration, internal storage, uh, data quality, which is. Well, mostly important, it has to be high quality of data to, to gain a better information. And then cybersecurity, uh, since, since artificial intelligence is actually all about security, so they have, to, they have to be fully upgraded with the security. And then we have benefits from AI, productivity, accuracy, and business value, productivity. Uh, artificial intelligence provides us uh, faster ways of analysis and reduces our time to, uh, to report financial uh, reports actually, and then an accuracy that actually reduces our errors, and then business value, and business value it improves our profitability. Uh, yes. In conclusion, to sum up, artificial intelligence is actually an inevitable outcome of the development of science and technology, but at the same time, uh, there are uh, corresponding challenges in applying artificial intelligence. Therefore, the financial system should completely understand artificial intelligence and make it applicant system in the financial field. This is my references and thank you. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Queen Adil. I'm a marketing student. Uh, my, super, my supervisor is uh, Professor Sabri Karabli. So today I'm going to talk about my topic which is about the sustainable marketing. Uh, this is the table of contents, introduction, theoretical framework, conclusion and work cited. Uh, first, with the introduction, uh, in the introduction we talk about the marketing in general and sustainable marketing uh, as a form of marketing. And uh, the literature review will focus on uh, will focus on the effect of sustainable marketing on the uh, businesses and stakeholders. So the definition of terms first definition is sustainable marketing uh, means that use the products and services uh, in a way that doesn't damage uh, the resources for the future generations. Uh, second definition is uh, green marketing. Uh, green marketing means uh, using the products and services uh, that socially and environmentally. Uh, last uh, definition is the eco-friendly uh, in a simple way it means it's not environmentally harmful. So uh, why it's considered uh, a contemporary topic? Uh, sustainable uh, marketing, it's not a new itself, but recently it became the most popular way uh, to, uh, for, now it's become the most popular way for the, um, 
for the satisfaction and achieve convenience with the regulations and for increase of profits for the companies. Uh, the second is theoretical framework analysis and methodology. Methodology used is uh, the descriptive uh, of 20 different research papers conducted to collect secondary data. Literature review, uh, it's only a sample of uh, literature review. I conducted 20 papers. This is the first paper. It was uh, the results shows that the green uh, marketing has a positive influence uh, on Porsche's intention. This is pictures uh, that shows the meaning of uh, eco-friendly. Uh, paper two is about the purpose. Uh, the purpose of this paper is that companies should take responsibility for their impact on society and the environment. Uh, the third paper shows that marketers uh, seem unfriendly if appealing to consumer sustainable consumption. There's a negative uh, relationship between them. Um, fourth paper, uh, finding of this paper is uh, study uh, Muslim do not find environmental issues important. So reflection in the literature review, it was about uh, conducted 20 different papers that covers uh, uh, the last 16 years, dated from 2006 to 2022. And the literature review will be useful to conversion with the previous studies. Findings uh, show that uh, there is a positive relationship between sustainable marketing and all stakeholder, uh, stakeholders of a business or a company. Uh, the limitation, the first uh, and general limitation was the small sample size. And the second one is the narrow focus of the study. A uh, third one of some reviewed articles represented only a literature review or only a theoretical framework. Uh, finally, there were articles uh, where authors didn't mention the limitation of their studies. In conclusion, uh, we did know what's the meaning of sustainable marketing. It's an important uh, concept and will affect in the future for uh, future generations. and. It will improve the quality of our lives and protect the planet and ensure that by 2030 uh, the planet will protected and uh, resources protected and to improve the life uh, that we live. That's uh, the work cited. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Abdullah al -Gmati. I'm going to present my graduation project, which is the impact of a in practice on employee performance of field study at Golden Crown Company. My supervisor is Dr. Mailud Al-Abdili, co-supervisor uh, Sabri Karki. So this is the, my table of content, start with introduction, finish with the recommendation and implication. As introduction, operating success, a successful business involves more than just generating profit. It also requires require effective management of the employee who contribute the success of, uh, of business. Uh, HRM practice can enable organization to accomplish this task with easy way to get positive results. A problem statement. While previous study has established a link between HRM practice and employee performance, but there is a limited understanding of the underlying mechanism of this relation. So the research in this area has often focused on developed country, and there is a lack of this research on developing country. Developing country. Uh, these are my research uh, question. Do, tra uh, do training and uh, development, employee engagement, recruitment and selection, and career planning have an impact on employee performance at Golden Crown Company. Objective of the study, uh, to investigate the independent variable in employee performance at Golden Crown Company. Scope of the study. The scope of the study is to investigate the HR practice, uh, uh, how, uh, investigate how HR practice affect the performance of, Golden, of employee in Golden Crown Company. These are my hypotheses. Significant of the study. The study takes both theoretical and practical approach to examine the impact of HRM practice on employee performance. So the main objective is to gain insight into how HR can contribute to development and maintenance of employee performance. Previous study, 20 articles were read and reviewed. Uh, 
which discussed the impact of charm practice on employee performance. All the research agreed that uh, that charm practice have the ability to influence employee performance. Uh, research approach. Uh, a study will adopt quantitative approach. Data will be gathered through questionnaire that include questions related to objective of the study. So the, uh, the purpose of, the question, uh, of this questionnaire is to access the impact of a challenge practice on employee performance at Golden Crown Company. Uh, the questionnaire has two parts. The first part is dem demographic information. The second part include questions related to my objective of the study. Population. Uh, the population uh, wa where uh, 75 uh, employees. Instrument validity, uh, data analysis, uh, the data uh, the data were analyzed used SpaceX version 28. Uh, we have used four tests, which are uh, reliability test, test of normality, Kronbach alpha, multiple linear uh, regression. Uh, instrument reliability, this table showed that the, uh, the questionnaire was reliable to use. A normality test. The, the data was not normally distributed, so to be able to use a regression, multiple regression, the data was transformed by using nature log test. A descriptive statistic. The, the highest one is employee engagement, and the lowest one is a tree. Multiple regression analyzed. So the R square is uh, 63 percent, which means 63 percent of uh, independent variable explain the performance of employee. Uh, coefficient multiple multiple regression. Hypothesis test. Uh, summary of, uh, this is the summary of this is the hypothesis as a result there are uh, there are no paper in the literature that uh, deem the impact of charm practice on employee performance so there is a significant impact of charm practice on employee performance at building income company two variable have uh, impact two variable have no impact which are uh, which uh, which the variable have impact is uh, are uh, uh, employee engagement and career planning and uh, the variable uh, that have no impact which are uh, uh, training and uh, recruitment so uh, this are uh, this are my limitation uh, the data was not not normally distributed limited access to previous study as a recommendation and implication, uh, the investigate was limited to building crown company. As the result, the study suggests that more research be conducted in various uh, sectors. Future research should uh, should be focused on additional human research activity that were not included in this research. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shahad Al Darat. My major is finance and banking, and my supervisor is Dr. Bashar. My co-supervisor is Dr. Sabri. Today, I'll be talking to you about the effect of COVID-19 on cryptocurrencies. So this is my table of content. Introduction, so cryptocurrencies has, has been starting ever since 2009, but the boost of um, cryptocurrencies has started um, ever since the pandemic has started, which is COVID-19. Okay. So the purpose of this study is to examine four variables, which are Ethereum, Bitcoin, Tether, and Binance. So the data covered the period 2017 until 2023. So 2017 was before COVID-19. So uh, we're examining this period specifically to see how COVID-19 has affected. Did it affect positively or negatively? Okay, so um, the summary of all the um, tested variables that I will mention later on is that COVID-19 has zero effect of, on cryptocurrency, but actually cryptocurrency affected positively on, on uh, COVID-19. COVID so uh, why is that? I'm going to explain it further on. Okay, so as I mentioned in a research problem is the study examines the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the returns of cryptocurrencies. Research objectives is to examine the effect of COVID-19 on Bitcoin, Tether, Binance, and Ethereum. So uh, here are my research questions. Here are my research hypotheses. Uh, so uh, the research importance is to to know how COVID-19 has affected, why did it affect it, and did it affect positively or negatively? Okay, so this is my literature review. In my literature review part, um, I was able to categorize um, all my papers that I done 
like I, I did up to 46 papers and I was able to categorize those papers into four different categories. So uh, my reflection is um, that the papers that I chose was about different previous studies and those different previous studies have stated that COVID-19 had no effect on, um, I mean cryptocurrency had no effect on COVID-19. So this is my uh, research methodology. My research methodology was all the data that I collected was collected from Yahoo Finance daily um, prices from 2017 till 2023. Okay, so uh, the COVID-19 uh, measurement was done throughout the dummy variables. I was able to choose zero and one. Zero was the period before, which is 2017 onward until 2020, which, um, and then from 2020 onwards, um, I gave it a variable of one. So this is the cryptocurrency return measurement. I was able to measure it throughout the rate of return. Data collection tool. Uh, this is my descriptive statistics, demographic information analysis, normality test. So uh, the result of all the previous studies stated that COVID-19 had a zero effect on cryptocurrency. But after doing the Mann-Whitney test, um, I was able to come up with a conclusion that COVID-19 has affected positively on cryptocurrencies. And my results are non-parametric due to a uh, cryptocurrency is an online currency. People can uh, people can use this currency all over the world at any time from their house. They can purchase this currency. So we cannot keep a track on an online currency. So as I said, and I used a man with me test. Those are my results of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance, Tether. Summary of the tested hypothesis. This is my limitation and future studies. And my, my recommendation and implication for all the previous study is that they weren't able to um, study two periods before COVID-19 and after COVID-19, but my study was able to um, conclude all before and after. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ayub Musmari. Today, I'll be presenting my graduation project, which is the impact of corporate governance mechanisms on FTSE 100 financial performance in the United Kingdom. My graduation project supervised by Dr. Hatem al Faitori and co-supervised by Professor Sabri Karoli. These are my table of contents, starting by introduction, ending by the references. First of all, corporate governance is a set of rules, practices to guide and control the firm's financial performance. Recently, corporate governance are essential in solving the problem of the conflict of interest between the policy makers and the stakeholders. These are my research, uh, research problem. Uh, the study is research problem is to investigate uh, the impact of corporate governance mechanisms and uh, to, uh, to, to know which is the most variable is, uh, efficient, is, is, is more, most significant for uh, profitability. The research aims for, uh, for this study is uh, to uh, investigate the impact of corporate governance mechanisms to determine which is the variable is more significant and in order to provide a recommendation and application for the stakeholders and the investors and the future studies. The research, uh, the, the research literature review uh, and the hypothesis development uh, that were generated from the 34 uh, research paper that have been studied generate uh, 39 per uh, negative percent and 61 positive percent. As these uh, positive and negative uh, results uh, has generated 11 uh, hypotheses as a result of previous studies. Literature review uh, and the hypothesis development generated the 11 hypothesis mixed results between a negative and positive results. Uh, the research me methodology used to examine the, the impact of corporate governance mechanisms on the 60, uh, on the 46, 50, 100 uh, listed uh, firms from the period 2003 till 2021. Uh, the definitions of variable the study is investigating 
the three uh, three dependent variable, which is the ROA and the ROE and the top and Q on uh, on the eight uh, independent variable, which is the board size, the board independence, and the audit committee size, audit committee meetings, firm size, which is the total assets and the compensation to executive and the woman on the board. Uh, the data collection and the definition of the, var the variables and uh, the nature regulation for the dependent variables. These are the models and how it were employed. The regression model uh, were used in uh, this uh, study by the order ordinary least uh, square. Uh, to achieve uh, the goals, and the study has suggested a houseman, uh, the houseman uh, test. That uh, the suggestion is uh, that the, the study should use a fixed effect uh, rather than uh, the random effect, uh, which is more accurate uh, for the study. And these are the three models for the study. Uh, the data collection uh, is to test the impact of corporate governance mechanisms and uh, to. Uh, to, to know which is the more efficient uh, variable for the, and to, to enhance the profitability. Uh, these are the correlation matrix table, which uh, shows us that our four dependent, uh, independent variables were correlated, which is the nature regression for the board size and the NDB and the ONN, which is the non-executive, and the IND. Uh, these are the examination for uh, the ROA table. Examination for ROE dependent uh, variable table, the top and Q dependent variable examination. The key findings for uh, these uh, three dependent variables uh, and uh, three uh, tables test, which is generated uh, that board size uh, leads to improve uh, profitability of FTSE 100. Co audit, uh, the, the CEO duality has been found positively. The audit committee size has been found positively affected. The audit committee meeting variables found to have a mixed results. Uh, the non-executive has found uh, measured by the ROA uh, as negative and positive in the, the two dependent variables, top and Q and the ROE. Uh, the, the, the results showed the increase of uh, profitability uh, in firm size. The, num the number of, uh, of board, uh, foreman on board increased profitability. The compensation were positively affected. Uh, and for the recommendation for this study, I recommend uh, in future study to examine more variables that enhance profitability. Uh, the implication uh, for this study, uh, the results can be used by uh, f uh, the, the future studies and the future investors to investigate uh, more variables and uh, to, en uh, to uh, enhance them in the regulations and uh, frameworks. Uh, the, the limitation for the study is uh, there's is the uh, absence of reliable data before the, 20, uh, the 2003, and uh, there's uh, and the, the study is investigating the uh, the only one region which is the UK, and these are my references. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mohammed Rufelli, and I'm here today to present my graduation project which is the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on liquidity and profitability of pharmaceutical firms in Europe, which is supervised by Dr. Mohamed Abbas and co-supervised by Prof. Dr. Sabri Karabi. Those are my table of contents, starting from introduction ending by recommendations. As introduction, as we know that COVID-19 started in China and then spread to the whole world, and it may affect the whole sector. Uh, for example, uh, tourism sector, industrial sector, this leads us to investigate the statement of the problem, which is if COVID-19 impact the pharmaceutical firms, which is a healthcare sector or not. Those are my research importance. This research is crucial for different stakeholders, shareholders, also for the new investors that they are going to invest in this sector, also to provide information for the decision maker. Those are my research objectives, research questions that relate to research uh, objective. Those are my research hypothesis. A literature review. More than 15 papers are reviewed in, to conduct this research. All the papers agree that COVID-19 impact, but the main difference between paper if this impact negatively or positively. Most of them, uh, or most of the paper, agreed that COVID-19 impacted positively, while other few papers uh, impacted negatively. All studies use a quantitative method by a different way of analysis. Those are development hypothesis. We, uh, after reviewing the papers, 
we conduct to use the alternative hypothesis, which is H0 and H1, then uh, hypothesis, H0, there is no impact, and H1, there is impact for two variables, liquidity and profitability. Those are my research uh, methodology. Research variable, we have the dummy variable, which is dependent variable uh, COVID-19, and independent variable liquidity and profitability represented in ROE, return equity. Those are the measurements of the variables. For data collections, the research of data collection used the secondary data. According to the source, secondary data used banal data that obtained from the top 200 uh, European countries, uh, European pharmaceutical firms from 2018 to 2021. The population ensembles, according to data availability, uh, the research used or employed 76 out of 200 companies based on the data availability. And we used like a randomly and annual report of those companies. For data analysis, we use the SPSS version 25 to analyze the data. We have like to, uh, to, to test for overall Europe and for individual uh, countries. And the t-test that used in this to conduct this research. We have data, data analysis. The first thing we have test of normality, which show that uh, for two variables that uh, the data follow or the research follow the barometric systems for liquidity and profitability. Also for, this is the t-test show that there is a significant and positive impact on liquidity as we, if we focus on mean, we see that after Corona, after the pandemic, there is increasing. Also for the profitability, it has the same uh, results which show that there is a positive impact on profitability ROE. Also if we focus on mean, which show that after pandemics, it has increased. This is the t-testing of the individual countries. Most of them are impacted positively. We have some countries that impacted uh, negatively like Spain, Sweden, and Russia. This is for the profitability. It has the same result, which show that COVID-19 pandemic, uh, for overall, most of the country impacted positively. These are the tests of hypothesis. We accepted uh, each one and rejected each zero, which is uh, there is impact. Okay, this is the conclusion. The key finding, it show that there is a significant positive impact on liquidity. Also for the profitability, most of the countries on the European are impacted positively while some country impacted negatively like France in terms of liquidity and in terms of uh, profitability, we have like uh, France and Bel Belgium. For an implication of the study, this may implicate the uh, decision maker, policy maker, and also for the majority of people that they are studies. For imitation of the study, we use only ROE in this study return in equity, and uh, uh, the limitation, it must be used ROA, which is the other measure of uh, profitability. These are my recommendations to recommend to use other factor which is ex, uh, export, import, and interest, uh, interest rate leverage. Also, another analytical analysis must be confirmed in this study. Thank you, friend. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mohammed Ghanem, majoring in finance and banking. My graduation project is the impact of working capital, working capital management on profitability of UK retail firms. Supervised by Dr. Hatem, co-supervised by Professor Sabri. This is my table of contents, so the introduction ending with references. Introduction, the retail sector plays a major lead in financial and uh, in economy uh, in the UK economy. It employs over 3.4 million employees and generate billions of dollars. This is my research objective. Literature review, I've gathered 33 research papers and I've developed the following hypothesis. These are the variables, definition of variables. We used the COVID-19 as a dummy variable because it came in one year. The model, I've studied over seven, uh, 27 uh, companies between the period 2001, 2021. Uh, I used the ordinary listed squares in the studies and I've, got, I've studied two independent variables, are the ROA and the ROE. The, uh, the, uh, the model I've gathered, I've used the random effect model 
recommended by the Hausman test. It shows that the random effect model, model is more accurate than the fixed effect model. These are correlation tests. I found that there is no correlation between the independent variables. These are the, the, the results of uh, ROA. These are the results of ROE. The key findings showed that the, the increase in cash conversion cycle ha can decrease the profitability. <clears throat> and the longer inventory days have the effect, uh, negative effect on profitability. Shows that the COVID-19 has a negative effect on profitability. My implication is that the, they have to reduce the cash conversion cycle to reduce uh, prof, uh, to increase profitability and have to reduce the holding period of inventory to increase profitability. They have to create uh, create backup plan for risk management to avoid any unsystematic risk. I, my limitation is that there was a lack of data between 2000. Uh, b b there was a lack of data under the 2000, before the, the year 2000, and uh, there was a lack of uh, lack of papers in the same region. My recommendation is to study other variables and study other uh, region rather than the uh, rather than the UK region and study other th sectors rather than the retail sector. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sukaina Adel and. Um, marketing student. My supervisor is Dr. Sabri. So today I will talk about my graduation project, which is about the effect of culture on Libyan consumers online buying behavior. So this is my table of contents. And let's start with the introduction, talk about the online commerce, uh, also known uh, as online shopping. So uh, the introduction show uh, the importance of uh, online shopping for this research. Uh, the definitions, we have a definition of consumers. Consumers uh, are those people who um, buy a product or uh, something to meet, the, uh, meet their needs. And consumer buying behavior is the act that consumers do when they buy something. Culture is the, the group of people uh, sharing the same beliefs, attitude, and religion. Uh, research on, uh, problem, it's uh, mainly the lack of a previous, uh, previously conducted information about online uh, consumers buying behavior in Libya. And uh, the aim is to know if online consumers buying behavior differs from consumers, from conventional uh, consumers buying behavior. Uh, the research objectives, we have uh, four uh, research objectives, which is uh, to examine the influence of psychological, social, cultural and uh, to examine if there are significant differences in responses between the respondents. Uh, research hypotheses, uh, these are eight hypotheses related to the previous studies and uh, theories. Uh, research importance, um, this paper, uh, this research addresses the subject from theoretical and practical uh, perspective. Uh, first, uh, the research is uh, important as well the results will uh, form a fundamental base for the other researchers' uh, attempts. And second, the importance of this research will pave the way for other researchers uh, to have a, a wider perspective. A uh, literature review uh, had conducted uh, 20 different uh, papers from different countries. Uh, these are the countries and most of researchers distributed questionnaire. Uh, in the theoretical framework, uh, the online behavior of consumer are subtly different in nature uh, from the traditional way for consumers buying behavior. And for purpose of current research, questionnaire with five point Likert uh, scale was designed and uh, current research puts focus on online consumers' behavior in Libya. So the research methodology uh, uh, contained the closed-ended question with, uh, designed the five-point Likert scale. Uh, the study started with distributing the questionnaire uh, across uh, social media platforms. And according to Morgan, uh, when the sample, uh, when the population is more than one million, so the sample uh, used is 384. And according to statistics reports, Libyan total population is uh, more than 1 million. 
uh, it's uh, 6 million. So uh, the sample you uh, used is uh, 384. And I reached here um, 439 respondents out of uh, 384. Uh, the data collection tool, um, secondary data and primary data. So the secondary data from the literature review uh, from the uh, 20 research paper and the primary uh, from um, the questionnaire distributed instrument uh, that's uh, data analysis, uh, including rel reliability tests, uh, Chrome Bash Alpha and the frequencies. So my data is non-parametric, so we, I use the Kolmogorov Semirnov and binomial and the Kroxel test. So this is the instrument reliability, uh, showed that uh, the questionnaire is reliable and can be used. That's the demographic information analysis. And normality test shows that uh, my data is non-parametric. Uh, in fact, this is the frequencies. And hypothesis testing all uh, accept H1 and reject H0. Uh, so there, this is my results and my limitations and a recommendation for others. And uh, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ahmed Jalai Hassan Bushna. I'm going to talk about my graduation project, which is the determined systemic bank performance in Saudi Arabia in this COVID 19 matter. This is a table of content. We're going to start with introduction. So, investors would rather become more interested in Islamic finance as the 2019 saw an increase in total assets by 15%, followed by 14% increase in 2020, with a majority of total assets centered in the Gulf country region. So, why this topic exists? COVID 19 has affected every sector in the world, including Islamic banking sector, which led to a renewed interest in investigating the determinant of performance. As previous study demonstrated, uh, inconsistent results. Uh, thus, therefore, we need to conduct more research. So, in terms of why the study is important, it's crucial to understand the challenge faced by this institution, giving a significant contribution of uh, Saudi and Islamic banks. In uh, doing so, we'll add to the previous literature, as most of the study covered Indonesian banks and Malaysian banks. More so, the information will be uh, helpful for investor and risk manager in order to make decisions. So, what question does this study ask? Uh, the study asks if one of the four variables has any significant effect on the dependent verb, which is performance, which will be accomplished. Uh, therefore, the objective of the study will be answering this question, which will be accomplished by testing this hypothesis. So, moving on to the literature review, more than 18 studies have been used in this study, when the most agreed on point is that operating expenses to operating income has a significant negative effect on performance. As for the methodology, the study used a panel data approach with the entire population of the Islamic bank sector uh, considered. And the sample bank is Rajhi Bank, al Bilad Bank, al Imad Bank, al Jazeera Bank. As for the data, the study utilized annual financial report covering the year 2018 to 2021, sourced from each bank official website. As for the variable, the study used four dependent variables, operating income to operating expenses, number form of finance, finance to bonds ratio, capital adequacy. As for the dependent variable, we use return on asset as an indicator of performance. As for the main analysis tool, the study used a regression analysis. Moving on to the data analysis, first we look at the correlation matrix to see if there is any strong correlation between dependent variable. As you can see that no strong correlation between dependent variable exists. So we move to the regression analysis. we look at the regression analysis, we see that 19% of the dependent variable is uh, explained by the independent variable. We can see that capital adequacy and operating expense to operating income has a, has a negative effect on performance. Why finance to deposit ratio and number form of finance has a positive effect on performance. However, only two variables were significant, which are operating income to operating expenses and number form of finance. And so we accept the non-hypothesis of the first two sets and reject the, reject the non-hypothesis of the last two sets, which are summarized in four points in the key findings. So moving on to the limitation. What limits the study? Uh, the outcome of the study cannot be generalized to other Islamic bank country and neighborhood countries, Islamic banks and neighborhood countries. The study only uses return on asset as an indicator of performance. The study ignores external factors such as GDP and inflation. The period under anal analysis is considered as limitation as data regarding the year 2022 and 2023 were not available. As for my recommendation for future research, I recommend future research to study the performance of Islamic Bank before and during the pandemic and determine the differences 
compare conventional bank with Islamic bank in Saudi try to add other dependent variables to reflect performance, and extend the period under the analysis. As for the application, manager should increase profitability by focusing on non-performing finance, reduce uh, operating expenses by having strict budget rules, increase capital adequacy to reduce risk, as doing so not interfere with performance, and motivate shareholders to put more reliance on Islamic Bank, as they showed an acceptable performance during COVID-19. So, this is uh, my graduation project, and thank you for your time. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohamed Zanat, and today I'm going to be talking about the impact of work environment on employees' productivity. My supervisor is uh, Dr. Mayloud, co-supervisor Dr. Sabri. And this is my presentation outline. As an introduction, there are many factors that affect employees' productivity. One of the main factors which affect employees' productivity is work environment. And my uh, presentation will focus on four dimensions of work environment, which are safe workplace, supervisor support, training and development, adequate workload. Uh, as an introduction, uh, the risk uh, the question of my, of my research is, uh, does safe workplace have an impact on employees' productivity at an Afora company or not? And the other four dimensions. Research objectives which are designed to, to answer the the objectives, and these are my hypotheses, which will study the safe workplace if it has no impact or has impact on employees' productivity at an Afora company. The teacher review, in this research I reviewed uh, more than 18 papers, and the majority of papers agreed that uh, uh, work environment has impact on employees' productivity. Research methodology, uh, research approach is uh, quantita uh, quantitative, data collection method, which is a primary data online survey, population, which is I uh, use the uh, whole population of the, uh, of the company, uh, 50, 50 employees, uh, data analysis, SPSS uh, version 28. As a result, this is uh, the re reliability test, which shows if my data is tr uh, trustworthy or not. And my data is trustworthy because it's 95% uh, trustworthy test of normality, which shows if my data is normally dis uh, distributed or not, and found that my data is normally distributed. Descriptive data, the employee, uh, employee's productivity has uh, 4.23, and which shows that it has high impact on, uh, very high impact on employee's productivity. And uh, uh, multiple regression model, uh, which found out it's uh, 80, 84%. I know the test which shows if the if work environment has impact on employee's uh, productivity or not and found it has work environment because it's less than uh, 0 0.5. Uh, coefficient multiple regression shows each, uh, found that two of my independent variable has impact uh, and the other two has no impact. And these are my hypothesis tests. Four of my hypothesis were rejected and four were accepted. Key result, uh, all, uh, all, all the employees agreed that uh, work environment has impact on employees' productivity and two of, my, uh, two of the dimension has significant impact and the other two has no significant impact. Limitation, the population of the company was small, limited access to previous studies which focus, uh, published focus in Libya, the, res the result cannot be generalized. Recommendations, these are my recommendations and applications. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Maria Merifai. Uh, my topic is about employees' attitude toward the benefit of uh, ISO 9001. Uh, my major is project management and my supervisor is Dr. Sabri. Uh, this is the table of uh, this is my table of content. Uh, first, I have an introduction, then theoretical framework, da data collection method, and data analysis results and conclusion. Uh, as introduction, today, achieving the word excellence uh, a class through the customer satisfaction, uh, providing high quality service and uh, product. And this is achieved by uh, implementing quality management system, strong and good. There are many uh, uh, 
policy management systems types, one of them ISO 9001, who established uh, by International Organization for Standardization. ISO 9001 has proven to be the most popular uh, management system, quality management system. My definition, quality management, management system, uh, quality management system, ISO 9001, International Organization Standardization, uh, that gives requirement for quality management system. For the organization research problem, uh, Mangola in 20, uh, 2013 mm -hmm. stated that the organization who was certified with the, with the ISO 9001, uh, it's expected to increase customer uh, satisfaction, employee, uh, uh, employee uh, engagement, cost reduction, and profit maximizers that encourage the uh, organizations and company to certify with ISO 9001. Uh, because Libya is a developing country, we, ha we have uh, to put more focus on uh, ISO uh, in, on quality management system, especially ISO 9001. Research objective. I have two objectives to determine the benefit of ISO 9001 and determine if any uh, the, any significant uh, differences uh, can be attributed to the participants in my survey. Research hypothesis. There is no benefit in implementing ISO 9001. There are benefits. There are no significant uh, difference significant significant among the demographic uh, analysis. There are uh, difference significant. Research importance to show the significance of implementing the ISO 9001 for the company who don't try to uh, get the certificate and implementing the, uh, the system. Theoretical framework. I have theoretical framework here and then uh, literature review, uh, 15, pa uh, 15 uh, papers uh, is analyze, analyze, uh, analyzed and, uh, and gathered for the literature review. And research methodology, uh, the population, the information obtained from uh, Raihan company who certified with, their, with ISO 9001. My sample was uh, 27 particip participants. The data collection uh, is an online sur survey uh, created by, under supervision of Dr. Sabri and uh, sent it online to the company. Data analysis. My, uh, my tested hypothesis regarding to uh, normality tests, uh, the data was uh, parametric and follows normal distribution. Uh, and the hypothesis uh, H01 rejected, uh, which is uh, there is no uh, benefit of implementing uh, ISO 9001, uh, rejected and accept uh, that there are benefits in implementing ISO 9001. At the conclusion, uh, the ISO 9001 is a strong uh, quality management system and uh, any company that not certified uh, must try and uh, implement, uh, implement uh, implementation the system. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Mohan al uh, majoring in banking and finance. My supervisor is Dr. Bashar al-Mansour, and my topic covers the connectedness between Bitcoin, gold, and crude oil prices. Uh, this is my table of content, starting with the introduction. Now, Bitcoin is a digital currency, otherwise known as a cryptocurrency. Gold is a precious metal, and crude oil is a type of petroleum that is mainly used in the generating of electricity. Uh, research objectives. The study has two research objectives, the first one being to investigate whether network connectedness plays a role in driving uh, Bitcoin, gold, and crude oil prices. The second one being to examine the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in shaping the patterns of connectivity between these three variables. Moving on to the research importance, it is important to study uh, the connectedness between Bitcoin, gold, and crude oil prices for many reasons, some of which include portfolio diversification, risk management, as well as the academic contribution. Uh, moving on to the hypothesis, the hypotheses were divided into three subperiods over the whole period, pre-COVID-19 and during COVID-19. Uh, this table shows the over the whole period, the acceptance and rejection of each hypothesis. 
pre-COVID-19, during COVID-19 pandemic. Moving on to the methodology, the, uh, the uh, methodology involved the collection of daily historical data from Yahoo Finance, um, spanning the years of 2018 till 2023. The uh, methodology that was employed is the widely recognized Diabal and Yilmaz methodology, and the model that was used was the TVP VAR. As I mentioned earlier, the hypotheses were divided into three subperiods. Uh, moving on to the average dynamic connectedness, uh, the, here you can see the uh, connectedness between each variable. For example, if we want to see the connectedness between Bitcoin and crude oil, you can see here that the connectedness would be 1.22%. The two represents the transmission of risk uh, to other variables, and the from represents the receiving of risk or shocks from other variables. Here we'll take an example. Crude oil transmits risk to the other two variables at a 3.66% rate, and gold receives risk at a 4.29% rate. The TCI represents the total connectedness index. Uh, so the total connectedness between these three variables would be 4.53%. Now we're gonna take a comparison between the pre-COVID-19 pandemic and the during COVID-19 pandemic average dynamic connectedness. Here you can see that pre-COVID, the total connectedness index was 4.33%, and it rose to 6.96%, which indicates that the connectedness between Bitcoin, gold, and crude oil prices grew as the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Network plots, uh, the color yellow represents the receiving of shocks, color blue represents the transmission of shocks, and the thickness of the line represents the amount of shocks that is being transmitted or received. Here you can see that Bitcoin transmits shocks to both gold and crude oil. Crude oil receives shocks from Bitcoin and uh, transmits shocks to gold. So gold here is the main recipient of shocks. Now we're going to take a comparison pre-COVID-19 and during COVID-19 network plots. Here you can see that Bitcoin transmits risk to both gold and crude oil pre-COVID-19. And during COVID-19, Bitcoin shifted from being a net transmitter to being a recipient of shocks. So here you can see that crude oil uh, transmits shocks to both Bitcoin and gold in large amounts. Moving on to the key findings, the key findings were obtained uh, from the accepted hypotheses of my study. Limitations uh, faced uh, some limitations, uh, some of which include the, uh, the uh, low amount of papers that were uh, available that covered my topic, as well as studying and examining uh, three different unrelated uh, uh, topics can, or variables can be a bit challenging. Nonetheless, I've managed to overcome that challenge. Uh, implications of recommendations. Uh, now the connectedness. There was only a slight connectedness, not, not a significant connectedness. And I would recommend portfolio managers and investors to diversify their portfolios using these three variables in order to reduce their risk. Uh, thank you for your attention. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohanad Hassan Al Zidani. So today I'm going to talk about the credit risk and its impact on banks' profitability. My supervisor is Dr. Muhammad Abbas, and my co supervisor is Dr. Sabri Karbli. Here is my table of contents. So, for, for the introduction, credit risk is the risk that borrower will default on a loan. This is the most important risk that banks will face as it, uh, it can have a significant impact on the bank's profitability. My research problem, increasing credit risk can lead in higher or number form of loan. Also increasing credit risk can lead in a weaker capital adequacy ratio. These two factors can lead lower profitability for the banks. Research importance. First of all, to determine the extent in which credit risk has influenced bank's profitability. Second one, to identify the different strategies, strategies that banks can employ to minimize credit risk and increase uh, profitability. To have better understanding of how credit risk impacts the profitability, to assess the effectiveness of credit risk management approaches. Research question, I have one research question, which is what is the link between credit risk and commercial bank profitability in the United States from 2018 to 2021? 
research objectives. The aim of this study is to explain how credit risk affects profitability of U.S. commercial banks based on these flows. First of all, to investigate if there is a relationship between capital adequacy ratio and return on assets. To investigate if there is any relationship between capital adequacy ratio and return on equity. To investigate if there is any relationship between uh, non-performing loan and return on assets. And to investigate if there is any relationship between non-performing loan and return on equity. Literature review. I have two studies. The first study conducted by Lee and Zhu in 2014. It's investigated the influence of credit risk management on, uh, on the profitability of commercial banks from the time period 2007 to 2012. So the sample size was 27 commercial banks in Europe, while the sample is 20 commercial banks. So the finding of this study indicate that there is no significant correlation between credit risk management and uh, profitability. The other study conducted by Al Shati in 2015 investigated the impact of credit risk management of financial performance of commercial banks in Jordan from the time period 2005 to 2013. The sample uh, was the whole commercial banks, which is 13 commercial banks. Uh, the study, the finding of the study conduct that there is significant impact between credit risk management and profitability. Here is my research hypothesis. Research methodology. The research methodology will explain the data collection method, sampling and measurement of the study. So the research used quantitative data for the time period 2018 to 2021. Here is my measurement uh, of variables. I have four variables. Uh, two of them are dependent variables and two of them are independent variables. The dependent variables are ROA and ROE, while the independent variables were CAR and MP, uh, non-performing loan ratio. The dependent variables uh, are the measurement of uh, profitability, while the independent variables are the measurement of credit risk. Sampling and data collection. I picked up 10 of 15 commercial banks based on data availability. So I collected the data from annual financial reports of banks and United States from the time period 2018 to 2021. Data analysis, the data analysis using Stata, which is a statistical software for data since version 14. The following tests were used to analyze the data, Hussman test, fixed effect regression, and correlation matrix. Regression analysis, I will uh, explain the relationship uh, between fixed effect and random effect. Here is uh, the regression analysis, as you can see. Uh, the difference between fixed effect is zero, zero, so there is no differences between them. So based on Dr. Yusuf Agmati advice, I chose fixed effect regression. So here is the fixed effect regression for ROA and ROA. Uh, as you can see, the p-value, both of them are more than 0 0.05, which is there is no significant impact between credit risk and Bank's profitability. Correlation matrix, as you can see here, there is negative correlation, uh, ne negative relationship between non-performing loan and uh, capital adequacy ratio. Here is my uh, hypothesis tests. Credit risk has not affected bank's profitability, accepted while the other one is rejected. Non-performing loan has not affected ROA and ROA accepted while the other one is rejected. Capital adequacy ratio has not affected ROA and ROA accepted while the other one is rejected. So here's my key findings. As I say, credit risk has not affected banks' profitability. Non-performing loan has not affected ROA and ROA. Capital adequacy ratio has not affected ROA and ROA. Limitation. So the data analysis really is that the credit risk has not significant the profitability, which means that is, uh, that uh, is a limitation in accordance to my data. Another limitation is that the research paper outdated, uh, contain outdated studies. Implication, the finding of this study where the independent variables, namely CAR and MPL, has not affected the dependent variables, which is uh, ROA and ROE. So money reinvestment should be re reorganized in order to generate profit. F uh, my recommendation, Future studies should, con uh, should consider inspe uh, inspecting a specific region and should uh, take a large samples to get accurate results because small samples 
uh, did, did not provide an accurate result. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Salim Jafar, and again, today I'm going to present the uh, determinants of bank profitability in the MENA region. Of course, my supervisor is Dr. Hatim Al Faituri. And uh, as for the determinants of bank profitability, this is my table of contents. And this is my introduction. In the introduction, the MENA banking industry has undergone a substantial change in the uh, past few decades due to economic expansions and deregulations. And the profitability of the region remains in, uh, a major concern given that their earnings are. Uh, lower compared, and compared to Europe and or, or Asia. And this is my research objectives. And for the research importance, the comprehending of the determinants of profitability that impact the bank profit can aid policy makers and, uh, and the decision makers into making more efficient, uh, efficient decisions. And the identification of profitability can aid the investors into making well-informed decisions in their investments. As for the, my uh, research problem, there is a lack of concerning uh, data in the MENA region and the financial instability may arise in the, the MENA region due to high risk taking of profitability. As to the regional background, the MENA region is, uh, divided into, uh, is, a divide, is a diversified and more dynamic expansion. And some of the MENA countries depend on oil and gas, such as Libya or Egypt. And some uh, depend on service and tourism, such as uh, Dubai and uh, Saudi Arabia. And there are countries that have political instabilities and economic in inequity. As for the research methodology, I have examined the fact that the influence of profitability of the MENA region and the variables utilized to study were obtained from uh, World Bank from the years 2000 to 2015 and a total of 197 commercial banks have been uh, hailed from 11 diff different countries were examined. And this is the, my variables. As for the regression model, I used the ordinary least square and the fixed effects after, of course, running the Hosman tests. And these are the models that I used during the, the, my research, which is the ROA, the ROE, and the NIM. And this is my findings, which will go in the key uh, findings. As for the key findings, we have uh, capital adequacy, which has a positive and significant effect, and cost management, which have negative and significant effects. We have loan loss reserves, which have uh, negative and significant effect. And we have non-interest income, which have a positive, and, which, and we have the size, which is a negative and, sig and significant effect. As for the implication and recommendations, with regards to capital adequacy, bank manage managers should uh, should ensure that the banks will be must be well capitalized, and the non-interest income should be considered the main source of revenue, as it has a significant and positive effect. As for the cost management perspective, it is important that bank managers should uh, consider their cost uh, cost policies and the spending, and the increase of loan loss reserves is not in favor of the MENA bank. They should lower it, and the size uh, the bigger the bank the lower the profitability due to uh, your uh, utilities and uh, electricity bills and the staff wages and so on and so on. As for the limitations, my first limitation concerning the MENA bank is the lack of data. And uh, the second limitation is the scarcity of independent variables which I uh, examined in the uh, research. And thank you for listening. Hello, my name is Sandra Sanam al -Aoud, and my supervisor is Dr. Sabri and I'm a um, student of uh, healthcare management. On this is a presentation, we will talk about managing patient satisfaction within this care on Libya. First here we have table of content, as you can see, and then we will go into the introduction. As a simple introduction, we can say, uh, satisfaction to start to be something very important, okay? And it's starting by customers and then it's transforming to patients in healthcare. That's why here in healthcare we will discussing how important it is to look in for the patient satisfaction, not just what them what them need what them need. We will look in also for what them want. Here we will talking about how you can make uh, your surface high quality and make the 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 patients get satisfied with your... Here, as you can see, we have uh, the defined. First, we have the healthcare quality defined and patient satisfaction defined. And also we have dentist care and survey coil. And this is the words, it's kind of, you can see, you can say it's the key word on this is a presentation. Uh, as we can see here, we have the 
research problems. As we said before, uh, the, the research problem is uh, on, uh, on healthcare, we're looking for what the patient needs. But now, the, these days, or we can say now, it's not enough. We need to look for the satisfaction to make the people come into our factories or come into our uh, hospitals or organ health organization. And here we will be specific with dentist care. Uh, here we have, as you can see, we, we have the research objective. There is a many objective starting with measuring the level of satisfaction in Libya and going to, uh, to identify uh, the patients if them like, like how uh, the doctors communicate with them or how the doctors like talk with them if the wait time is good and stuff like that. And also here we have the research objective and the research hypothesis. As we can see here, there's a mini hypothesis, but the most important is if the, the patient is satisfied with the all, overall uh, surface on dentist care in Libya. Also here we have the research important and here now we will talk about the theoretical framework. The theoretical framework is uh, talking about uh, the main ideas of this is PowerPoint. Here we have the patient satisfaction and the survey choir models. And we have the literature review. On this uh, presentation, we, we're looking for 20 papers who's talking about the patient satisfaction with dentists around the world to have like basic or have ideas about what we're looking exactly here on Libya. Uh, research methodology. The research methodology was, la, was it's going by questionnaires and the questionnaires uh, was going with uh, survey wild models. Now we will go in for the result. Okay, here as we can see the result. First, we, fi we find out the patient are satisfied with uh, the dentist care here on Libya. And also the patients were satisfied with all uh, the, uh, the appointment when them be including a clinic. And also the patient was satisfied with the waiting times and the communication with doctors. And also we figure out that there is not a lot of uh, uh, different on the demographic. The demographic it's kind of, we can say, it's not affecting our result. Okay, here we have some limitations. Uh, first, this is study, it's supposed to be on the whole Libya. But the, as we can see here, the big numbers, it's come from Benghazi. And also we have the respond. It's supposed to have to be 300, uh, 384, according to Morgan sample tables. But uh, here it was only uh, 303. And also we have like most of respond that's coming from males when supposed to be from females. And Last, we have some recommendations for uh, the doctors or the dentist doctors. Uh, we can say uh, we look at, we want the dentist doctors should like listening more for the patient to know what them looking for to be satisfied, and also like make them include them process like what uh, the treatment them looking to do and communicate with patient more. And thank you for listening. Hello everyone, my name is Ali Adil. My major is finance and banking management and I'm going to present my graduation project which is the determinants of Islamic banks performance in Kuwait. This is my table of contents, starting by the introductions. Uh, so Islamic banks are financial institutions that make their banking activities under Islamic law and they have two main principles which are the prohibition of using interest rates and 
uh, profit and loss must be shared between um, the Islamic Bank and the borrower. Moving to the research problem, so after reviewing previous studies, I conclude that most of the researchers agreed on selecting return on assets as a dependent variable, while selecting independent variables uh, remain in doubt. So this study aims to select the most important factors that affect uh, Islamic Bank's performance in Kuwait. Moving to the research importance, one of the main goals of this research is that it helps Islamic banks to control and manage the factors that might have a negative impact on, on their performance. Also, many stakeholders like shareholders, managers and uh, regulators can use the study's findings uh, to make appropriate decisions. Also, uh, many uh, policy makers like M the Ministry of Finance and uh, central banks can use uh, the study's findings to create solid policies. Moving to the research objectives, there is one main objective for this research, which is to determine the factors that affect Islamic banks' performance in Kuwait. And I have selected seven independent variables. These variables are cost management, bank size, capital adequacy ratio, uh, leverage, liquidity, uh, inflation, and GDP. Moving to the research hypotheses, these hypotheses are generated based on the literature review. And uh, the null hypothesis demonstrate that these variables uh, do not have a significant effect. And the alternative hypothesis demonstrate that these variables have a significant effect on the Islamic Bank's performance in Kuwait. Moving to the literature review, 21 papers were reviewed to assist the study. And uh, most of the researchers agreed on selecting return on assets as a dependent variable. And the most important and most common independent variables are uh, bank size, capital adequacy ratio, inflation, and GDP. Moving to the data, this study uses um, banal data of 11 years from 2020, uh, from 20, uh, 2012 to 2022. And uh, the financial data is collected from the fi uh, financial statements and the economic data is collected from the international monetary funds. Moving to the population ensemble, this study uses uh, the, the whole population of Islamic banks in Kuwait, which are four Islamic banks. Moving to the data analysis. The study uses banal data analysis and in order to examine um, the determinants of Islamic Bank's performance, fixed versus random effects regression analysis is used. And uh, to select uh, the best model for this research, there is a test that must be used. Uh, this test is called Haussmann test. Uh, the Haussmann test results that the fixed effect is the best model for this research. Moving to the fixed uh, effects table. Uh, this table summarizes uh, the results of this study. As we can see that cost management have a negative effect and this effect is not significant. Leverage has a negative effect and this effect is not significant. Liquidity has a positive effect and this effect is not significant. Bank size has a negative effect and this effect is significant. Capital adequacy ratio has a negative effect and this effect is not significant. Inflation has a negative effect and this effect is significant. And finally, GDP has a positive effect and this effect is statistically significant. Moving to the accepted hypotheses, uh, I accepted the null hypothesis for uh, capital adequacy ratio, inflation, and GDP, and I accepted the alternative hypothesis for um, uh, cost management, bank size, GDP, and inflation. Moving to the limitations, uh, this, uh, there are three main limitations. This study is concentrated on only uh, seven independent variables and there is one uh, dependent variable and the sample use is only for uh, Islamic banks in one country. Moving to the recommendations, uh, future studies can use, the stu uh, can use more independent variables and they can use a uh, longer period of time in order to uh, give more accurate results. And finally, um, uh, future studies are recommended to use more dependent variables uh, to give more accurate results. And thank you for listening. Hello everyone, my name is Musfa Matmati. I am uh, supervisor uh, of Dr. Sabri. I am talking about graduation project. My total customer is used towards QR code used and shopping events from Libya. Uh, I have uh, content. The introduction. The introduction marketing is used by QR code to deliver the message about the uh, product or service by consumers before an order for marketing, marketing message uh, to be re well uh, received and understood uh, marketing should adapt the con content of QR code uh, expect expectation the consumer might have uh, it, it is important to know exactly who does the consumer introduce uh, to, to the use QR code in the marketing moreover it's uh, important to, uh, to know are the information that uh, customer gene from the QR code scanning is useful to the consumer well as who useful. 
Okay, I will have uh, for definition for definition mobile marketing QR code, one D barcode, uh, five point Likert scale. Okay, I will we have a research problem. The research problem, the research on QR code use using uh, in the Libyan market is limited, and the study study can provide valuable uh, insight for business operating in the region. The study can provide insight into how QR code can be effective used as a marketing tool and uh, engage with the customer and increase sales in Libya. Okay, uh, we'll have research objective, a research to research objective to measure customer use in Libya towards QR code in the, in the shopping. Uh, uh, second, the two and five, there are any significant difference among uh, perspective that could be attributed to demographic factors. Okay, we have uh, two hypotheses. Uh, the consumer, H0, the consumer does not have hold positive attitudes towards QR code. H1, the consumer hold positive attitudes towards QR code. H0, there are no significant difference among prospective response that could be attributed to demographic factors. Okay, we have research importance. Uh, the research on customer attitudes towards QR code used in the marketing. And the project focus on important for understanding the effective of the technology in Libya and position to achieve the customer engagement. It, it can provide insight in the, uh, into the factor and the influence of customer willingness to scan QR code the, of the value offered. Okay, uh, let's review. According to the 20 paper review, uh, 6 out of 20 research paper are from USA. Three from Indonesia, one from UK, one from Australia. Okay, uh, we have research methodology. The research methodology, the graduation project, use a quantitative approach. Use the research as a result, study, gather, and examine the numerical data and order the test hypothesis and each collection regarding consumer attitudes towards QR code. <coughs> uh, okay. Uh, Data collection tool, the survey was uh, created and designed through various social media. The symbol were selected in the redom and were uh, displayed across Libya. Uh, Interestment reliability, the data, reliability, uh, data analyze, data analyze the reliability test, uh, frequency test, descriptive test, normality test, uh, parametric or non parametric distribution. Data analyze. <coughs> Okay, uh, and the stress treatment reliability, the reliability of the test findings indic indicated that in the dimension, the dimension one dimension in the project are reliably, each dimension al alpha value was more than the activity reliability value 0 0.883. Okay, the normality test, demographic information. The descriptive statistic, the hypothesis test, uh, causal wells, results, the demographic information uh, can show a significant difference in the uh, percentage in the which each group of respondents was uh, repeated. The majority of the respondents were female of age between uh, 18 and 25 single or and single with a uh, degree, Libyan student and monthly income that uh, was less than 1,000. Uh, results of the test hypothesis. Limitation, the, there are the research with the no limitation and current research along the majority of the fixed creation limitation. Okay, thank you for the attention. Good afternoon, my name is Talal Milad and I will be presenting my graduation project which is titled The Effect of COVID-19 and the Profitability of Conventional Banks in the GCC region. We've got the table of contents which starts with the introduction and ends with the implications and recommendations. Chapter 1, the introduction. The COVID-19 pandemic first took place in the city of Wuhan in the country of China uh, starting in the year of 2019. Research problem to verify whether the COVID-19 pandemic has indeed negatively affected the profitability of GCC conventional banks. <clears throat> it is crucial and extremely important for bank managers to provide guidance for banking sector policies and commercial judgments. 
As you can see, the research objectives are comprised of three different objectives to determine the effect of COVID-19 on the return on assets, to determine the effect of COVID-19 on the net interest margin and the return on equity. The research questions are consistent and they are in line with the research objectives, literature review. Uh, the Gulf Cooperation Council was first founded in 1981, which is comprised of five different countries, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, the UAE and Oman are amongst its members. The literature review, I've constructed a literature review with the help of 20 research papers from Google Scholar. <coughs> the research hypotheses are comprised of four diverse hypotheses, which I will be delving deeper in depth further down the line. The research methodology, the research approach, the study has used secondary data through a quantitative uh, approach. The data collection model, I've gathered financial statements and balance sheets through a trusted uh, source such as Yahoo Finance for the five conventional banks from 2018 up until 2021. The sample of study consists of five conventional banks, Al-Ahli Bank of Kuwait, Al-Ahli United Bank of Bahrain, Al-Masraf Bank, Mashraq Bank and Doha Bank of uh, Qatar. The data analysis, I've used the 25th version of the SPSS program to analyze my data. Chapter four, the data analysis. <clears throat> the steps in the data collection are comprised of three different steps. By first formulating a test of normality to determine whether my data is parametric or non-parametric. Second, to conduct a descriptive statistics analysis. And finally, to conduct a man whitney u test to analyze the data. The test of normality reveals whether the data is parametric or non-parametric. And after I've analyzed the data, I've found out that the data is indeed non-parametric since it's below the 0 0.05 uh, mark. The descriptive statistics analysis reveals that three of my financial performance metrics have been negatively affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, which is the independent variable. The Man Whitney U test reveals that all of the financial performance metrics are under the non-parametric mark since they're below the 0 0.05 p-value. <clears throat> The test of hypotheses, I've rejected the null hypothesis, which is H0 and accepted the alternative hypothesis, which is H1 in this case. Chapter five, which is the conclusion. The key findings, I've accepted the alternative hypothesis, which is the first one, which is the COVID-19 pandemic has significantly affected the profitability of conventional banks. The second one being the COVID-19 pandemic has negatively affected the return on assets. Third one being the COVID-19 pandemic has negatively affected the return on assets, uh, return on equity. And finally, the last one being that the COVID-19 pandemic has negatively affected the net interest margin. Limitation, the first limitation is that the study only focused on five conventional banks instead of focusing on the larger sample. The second limitation is that the study only focused on profitability financial metrics and not a diverse, a plethora amount of variables. Implications or recommendations. The implication in this scenario is that the COVID-19 pandemic has indeed been a huge factor and has actually negatively affected the financial performance metrics such as return on assets, return on equity and net interest margin. And the recommendation suggests that future studies should consider further investigating other significant variables that are uh, dedicated towards credibility, uh, credibility profitability and liquidity. Thank you for listening. Good evening everyone, my name is Mohamed Mahmoudi and today I'm going to talk about my graduation project, the impact of HRM on organizational performance, the case of Libya International Medical University. Uh, this project was under the supervision of uh, Dr. Mayroud al -Abdi. And here's the table of my content. And uh, now for my introduction, HRM refers to the utilization of uh, digital platforms, um, software and online systems for the purpose of managing uh, HR uh, uh, processes. It is considered as uh, an essential tool for uh, contemporary organizations um, to uh, maximize their human capital and um, uh, improve overall performance. And now for my research problem, this issue statement underlines the importance of uh, researching HRM uh, and organizational performance uh, practices in um, organizations. Uh, Thus, this, uh, uh, the current um, research will examine the, uh, this topic at Libyan International Medical University. And now for my research importance, 
the research looks at the issue from both uh, practical and theoretical perspective. Uh, the purpose of, of this study was to see what effect HRM ha uh, practices have on organizational performance at LIMO. And uh, I believe that this study will lead to a better understanding uh, of the role of HRM uh, in establishing and maintaining organizational success. And uh, the study findings and recommendations would be useful to university administrators and managers. Now from research objectives, these are the research objectives and research questions, research hypothesis. And now for uh, the research uh, methodology, the research will employ a quantitative approach. Uh, the data was collected via uh, questionnaires. And now for the data collection, the primary data was collected um, by developing an online survey, um, which consisted of 30 questions. A total of 133 uh, of university employees filled out the survey. And the SBSS in regression uh, model was used to um, analyze the gathered data. And now for the data analysis, the data wa were analyzed using uh, SBSS version 27. And uh, instrument reliability, this, this table shows the Kronbach's alpha value for the three independent variables with uh, 92% and uh, with a validity of 96% and um, the dependent variable organization performance has a 89% uh, of Kronbach's alpha value and um, a validity of 94%. These uh, are the demographic data, uh, data an analysis. Uh, here for uh, gender, 56% of uh, the respondents was female and um, while for uh, males it was 43.6%. Uh, and uh, this table shows the current position for each participant and the uh, educational level for each participant, uh, age group from 20 to more than uh, 50 years, and uh, years of experience from less than 5 years to more than 15 years. Uh, this, now for uh, descriptive statistics, e-recruitment, um, uh, this table has shown that it has a mean, uh, overall mean of uh, 3.94, and standard deviation of 0 0.604 and the relative importance with, uh, of uh, 78.8. Uh, now for the other variable, electronic performance appraisal, the overall mean for this variable is 3.85 and uh, 0 0.680 for the standard deviation and relative importance of 77. Um, the overall for this variable is 3.66 0 0.844 standard deviation and relative importance of 73.2 percent. And for the normality, normality test, now this table shows that um, the data was normally dis distributed and uh, it is parametric and it can be analyzed using simple regression analysis. Now this, uh, the simple regression analysis, this table shows that uh, the variable has been uh, has explained the dependent uh, dependent variable by 48%, while it has a correlation uh, of 69%. And this table shows that it, uh, it has an impact on organization performance, and it is significant. Same with the other variables. And now for my research hypothesis, uh, based on the results of simple regression analysis. Uh, this table shows that uh, the study has accepted all the H1 and uh, rejected all the H0s. The key results for this study, the majority of the participants was females. Uh, all participants agree with the three variables and it has an impact on organization performance. The, uh, there is a significant impact of HRM on organization performance. And uh, e-recruitment has the highest impact on the organization performance. Limitations for this study, uh, limited access to uh, previous studies published on Libya. And uh, the, the sample size of this study was relative, relatively small, and, uh, which may impact the statistical power and uh, generalizability of the study. The study was conducted at a single institution, uh, which limits the generalizability of the study. And now for the implications and uh, recommendations, um, the first one is to enhance the generalizability of the study. 
uh, future research could employ mixed methods approach and the organizations uh, should continuously evaluate and improve the EHRM uh, practices based on feedback and emerging um, technological advancements. Thank you.